And hello, everybody. Welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. You're watching episode three of our Mega Dungeon campaign, The Halls of Arden Vool, using the OSC system, Old School Essentials, by Gavin Norman. Arden Vool is by Richard Barton, and we're looking to dive back in. They are in the midst of the ruined city, exploring it. I'm trying to find a way down to the depths below. So, uh, to begin with, I am John. I am your referee. And going around the horn, we have... Hi, I'm Mike. I'm an acquired taste. I'm playing uh, Goran Blackhood, the dwarf. <laughs> I am David. I have a bit of a cough, but I am playing Varger, and uh, I love... No, that was that was going to sound terrible. Love my taste. Anyway, okay. And moving on. Didn't, didn't think about those words. <laughs> All right. Do Doing we good so far. English is fun. It's the cold medicine talking, David. <laughs> Go. Theraflu, yes. <laughs> Next up. Oh, okay, that's me. Uh, I, I'm Matt. I don't have anything clever to say. I am Avaricios of Epirenus. I'm the party's cleric, and I'm uh, looking forward to casting a spell someday. If I have <laughs> well, I have some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, okay, I'm I'm Ted, and I am playing the mage Osric the Optimist, and I have no idea what Mike tastes like. <laughs> uh, Ted, can I ask, will Osric have a new... I would love if this were the case. A yes, new, like, have okay, a new okay, over okay. Oh, wow. every right. week. Nice. Right. Perfect. Oh, and constitution score of 11. Mm. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. A sinewy mage. Cute, cute the swords aware. appearing on screen. Here we go. <laughs> there they are. Proof in yep. the pudding. Okay, so uh, let me see here. Last time, let me get my notes up here. We've got... Um, uh, the adventurers, uh, thanks to Varger, uh, rode the fast trip up, up to the side of the plateau by rising up in the recently activated hand of the giant colossus of Arden, um, all the way up the side of the cliff. And they have explored a number of the ruined towers that uh, used to form the bastions of the wall that surrounded the city uh, on their way towards the main boulevard that cuts directly through. And their plan uh, was to head towards the Great Pyramid of Thoth, which they have heard rumors um, is the main entrance, the main known entrance to the caverns below. Um, they've also heard rumors, of course, that the, um, the Inn of the Broken Head lies somewhere to the north of the city um, itself. And so they're probably going to make towards that in order to find some sh shelter. Um, before they head back into the depths, but we'll see what happens in the meantime. So you guys have recently um, just come to the plaza, which is uh, let's switch over to Albert here. Obelisk is right around here, and that had a whole bunch of stuff on it, right? Um, all this sort of stuff of like people interacting with lizards, and there was some mythic script. The whole upper portion though was dominated by sun imagery, and then there was. Um, a, a strange mythric um, inscription on it as well. Uh, let me see if I can bust that out real quick. Boop, boop, as, boop. as if we don't recall this, John. Come on. Do you recall? Avid note takers. Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the beacon shall be revealed to those who bring midday life to sun and moon and stars. That's right. So. Nice. Yeah, and that was um, written above a deeply incised onk that was sort of set aside by itself, right? And so, you said, you mentioned that that, that particular uh, panel or section of the obelisk was inscribed more deeply and, and maybe some, sort of differently than the remainder of it, yes, right? Yeah, deeply, deeply incised. Like with tremendous force. Yeah, but 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 you know, uh, with uh, with yeah. skill as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that was going to be my question. Was it done like with a lightning bolt, or was it like no, just, just like, like really, really deeply in, like it's okay. know, multiple inches? No. Uh, I I had a question about it. Did it, did it look like like if it was carved that deep, it could have been overwritten on top of something else? Is there any like trace of something else that was written there first that this was like like overwritten later? No. No, and to be clear too, it's only the onk that is deeply incised. This the, the oh, it's not the okay. yeah. The inscription itself is oh. like pretty normal. Yeah, 
like deeply incised, like if you had a nice solid gold onk, you could stick it in that spot. Uh, yes, it, uh, that that could possibly be the case. Yeah. Are you holding out on us, Ted? No, but I know where we got a gold bar. We could bang that into an onk shape. John, just um, dwarven stone carving knowledge. I can tell, like this. These carvings, the inscriptions, the actual words on them, not the Ankh, really deep inscription, all would have dated from the time of the city, right? They weren't post the city. Someone didn't yes. come along and carve this stuff after the fact. No, okay. no. These are definitely, uh, uh, yeah, of the time of the city. Yeah. Sorry. In, in stupid site. question. But I just wanted no, to, no. I just wanted stupid to. question. Um, uh, speaking, of, speaking of stupid questions, uh, this is me, Avarisos. I, I am just curious. Uh, my friend, you are, um, uh, you are very good at climbing, but you... Maybe like to climb up and take a real close look at that looks pretty important that thing just uh, kind of shimmy right up and take a real close look i would be uh more than happy to do some shimmying up the, the what all the at the ox thing you mean yeah if because that that's near the top of it uh, no i think it's like, gonna... yeah. like five feet up i think you said uh, yeah mm -hmm. oh it's only five feet up oh i thought it was much higher than that yeah yeah i mean Stuff I goes just, just to show off. Can I like kind of leap up five feet and be like, "Oh yes"? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm very, I'm not that tall. You know, I just thought the obelisk itself is about thirty-five feet tall, um, which and... you could climb if you wanted to get a bird's eye view. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, if you do that, maybe you could see the inn that we that we're looking uh, for. You maybe. know, it's not a t John. Is this a uh, pockmarked stone? Is it possible for me to have decent finger holds on this, or is it sheer? Uh, it's it's pretty sure. I, I think this would actually require your roll. Time check. And how, how yeah. tall is it? 35 feet. Okay, so just That's so true. I remind myself of the climb sheer surfaces roll. I roll every 100 feet. If I fail, I fall at the halfway point suffering damage. So, 35 mm -hmm. feet. <clears throat> I have three pips, so that would be about a 50% chance of success. I would fall 15 feet. Which would incur what kind of damage? Because I have a whopping three HP. You uh, would die. Yeah, I think I would die probably. Well, you would. Right? You would. It's a D six damage, so there's a chance that you would be. You would go to zero, in which case we would roll on the, on the everyone's favorite is there, chart. <laughs> is there not a way to use um, your rope to ensure that you don't fall? Well, I would say not just lasso the top of the thing and then just. That's a brilliant idea. Mike, whose character name is... It's more difficult than uh, it looks. It would definitely require, like, an Lord attack roll. Black Hood! <laughs> it's a cool idea, though. I like I like this, like, lasso idea. Can I just try it for kicks? I mean, it's it's good. Sure. It'll take but, a turn. Uh, By the way, it's about it's about 3.30. Because we don't have a grappling hook or anything like that, right, guys? Oh, no. Come on. No. We you should just the money. Money. Maybe you can fashion one out of a couple of your iron spikes. Oh, John. John, I have a brilliant idea. Okay. It's just coming fast Bear and furious. Bear with oh. me. Is really trying to just weasel out of a climb check. You're aware of how lumberjacks climb trees using the tension of a rope wrapped around the circumference of the tree. Yep. When they lean against it, it gives them enough friction so they can basically walk up. Yep. yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Could I do that with the rope uh, to yeah, get a better? I, I don't see why climb? not. He wants to move on that pole. He wants to use all <laughs> yes. way on honor and something else. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, you rope it around and then you hold on to it and you, yeah. and you, you wink your way up. Um, <laughs> it's a, you're actually, are you pretty beefy? You're pretty beefy for a, actually. Let's get I have 15 strength. So yeah, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm you're a beefy, strong, yeah. strong thief. Let's get the scores up here for the. Only seven wisdom. So not wise, which is why I said yes to this suggestion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you lumberjack your, you lumberjack haul your way up, uh, up the yeah. obelisk 35 yeah. feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the so the like we said, the first eight feet of it is where you have that imagery of all of the humans and the lizards, and um, mm -hmm. in the midst of that is that one band that is blank except for the Ankh and the Mithric inscription. Then above the eight feet, it's all sun imagery from that point onwards. Um. Uh. Okay. And yeah. So you 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 get your way up to the top and you strike a pose. Um. In the Westering sun. It's very Assassin's Creed. Love it. Oh, nice. All right. So a few things, uh, and also if you have suggestions, feel free to call up to me. I'm only thirty feet above you guys. Um, I'd like to do a, a a survey just 
a 360 survey and see if I see the dragon. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So, yeah, yeah. so you're looking out over the entire ruined city looking for the immediate threat. Um, You do not see the dragon in the air anywhere. Awesome. Um, While I'm looking for him... However, Sorry, however, um, something uh, looking for the dragon though, you do see a a something that you mistake for the dragon, then you realize that it must be, even though it's at quite a long distance, it must be a much smaller creature. It is winged, however, um, uh, but it is very, very far away, which is why you think it's probably still quite large, um, but you can't quite make out what it is. It's it's like serpentine and with like you know like bat like wings, like long wings like a dragon could you could you or uh, tell me where that is so i can kind yes. of mark the map roughly yes um it seems to be circling around this tower right here hmm. I'm just gonna do a little red dot there um all right that's good to know um in addition to that i'd like to just survey around and see if i see any uh movement uh whether they be like wagons on the road mm-hmm. or you know, animals or people, as well as like smoke or signs of the inn or fires or civilization. So yeah, good, good call. So uh, looking for smoke, you see it. All right. You see it coming from this dwelling, uh, which you've probably already pegged as the inn right here. All right. Oh, wait, where? Can you ping it again? I'm circling it right here. Yeah. Cool. So there are people in the inn. I'll just go ahead and I'm communicating this down to these guys as well. I think there's some sort of Winged creature to the yeah. south, and uh, the end the, looks... There's smoke coming from there. You also te- see two small plumes of smoke coming from uh, the towers that um, bracket the north road. Right here, and right here. Okay. Plumes of smoke, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Forgive my lack of uh, drawing skill there. but You don't <laughs> see... Let me think... You don't see any movement, except you see some in the lake right here. Um, you see some splashing um, and ripples, uh, most of them closer to the shore. Uh, and the western, like the southwestern portion of the lake itself, actually, there is no clear shore. It actually sort of becomes the marsh. Do you know what I mean? Like reeds start to pop mm, up, and then it just becomes okay. like a marshy area. That's very cool. Uh, you right. can see, too, um, a, a work of wondrous Archontean architecture. There is a dam right here. So this lake is actually artificial. Mm. It was it was created um, out of the Swift River's flow at some point. Damn. Um, and then, does the dam look as if it has been maintained? Uh, no, but it looks of, from this distance, um, and knowing what you know of, of, of the Archonteans, the people that now rule you, um, they... Uh, they build things to last, right? It, it's top top quality. So yeah. even though it, it it has probably been abandoned, it still is serving its function, obviously. Um, uh, other than that, you see the um, what we sort of pointed out when I first, you know, when I first got you up to the top of the plateau here, um, is uh, you can see the this this ruined fortress like thing in the midst of the river here, mm-hmm. and this is like the ruins of a palatial estate. Oh, interesting. Somehow. Um, this looks like to be a ruin as well, but relatively whole. So you can make out sort of the shape of what the building was. And then there's like tons of ruins everywhere else. It's just that you, um, sure. uh, the, the, the ruins are like smashed to pieces now sure. directly in, points of interest, though. Yeah. yeah, directly in front of you. Like I said, there's very few trees. Um, the trees that are in the ruined city itself, most of them are like below like eight feet tall, like they're new growths, if anything. Mm-hmm. However, there is this massive avenue that you're about to go down, uh, supposedly, um, with all of these uh, uh, oaks, right, that lead you directly into what appears to be uh, a ruined form of some sort, uh, which the ruins have been completely blasted aside, right, um, to give you a clear view of the Pyramid of Thoth beyond. There is, however, a massive, like a huge oak tree that dominates right in the center of that form. And it is fronting on the um, on the eastern side of that form is a surprisingly intact um, uh, squat-like tower that does not appear to have any windows except on the top floor, which is ringed with windows. Um, and uh, hmm. that's basically what you're noticing. So you, you, you kind of have like a bird's eye view of exactly what you're yeah, looking at in this yeah. map right now. Amazing. Um, 
but the only signs of habitation you see are some sort of movement in the water and then the smoke rings up north smoke uh trails up north uh, what do you guys okay. think should we drain the lake I, you know I want it. You know I. Want it. I, I thought about it. Listen, that, that's it, may, it may not be this, too. this session, but there's we're messing with that dam. Uh, real quick, just time tracking. Real quick, uh, making uh, uh, coming up with the idea with the rope, hiking up, and then uh, peering out and relaying down what you saw. I'm going to say it takes two turns. Um, it is now uh, four p.m. Uh, Varger, Varger um, uh, two things. You say you, saw, you see a you see a winged creature that way. Maybe you get on the other side of the the obelisk so it cannot see you that's not a bad idea okay and, I'll shimmy. Uh, is is there a, a capstone on top of the something like to finish it off something sometimes there could be fancy stuff up there no it actually appears to be made out of uh, a solid piece of granite that's been carved all right uh just a quick n a note i don't i mean if we don't want to keep these sessions session, it's fine but i marked points of interest with blue and enemies potentially with red on the map that's why i guess um, Looks good. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, and I don't see any wagons or any movement, like cross movement, currently. No. Um, do I, however, see any indications of vehicle movement? AKA, like, does the road below look as if there are tracks in it? Or I just want to get a sense of like the scale of traffic. Right? Like, does it seem like it's foot traffic? Or does it seem like people are wagging stuff around? Um, it's it's really difficult to tell because the road that you're <laughs> on is cobblestones. Yeah. Um, and uh, they are, they're pitted and, and there's like weeds growing up and all that sort of stuff. But mm. um, it's not, it, it, it's so well made, right? That there's no yeah. mud, right? There's, there's very, there's very few yeah. tracks. So it's very okay. difficult to tell. However, um, from this vantage point, when that ruined form that I talked about uh, right here, yeah. mm -hmm. where the oak tree is in the middle of it, um, that is strewn with like, um, you know, like the Roman form in, in uh, in Rome, you know, you know, like there's just tons of ruins everywhere, right? Like they kind of give you the barest indication of what the actual layout of that area was. Um, it's similar to that, but like picture like like that forum, but like all of the existing stuff that's there right now that you can visit has also toppled, and it's just like a massive spread of like stone and ruin. Um, you can see that amidst that, however, there have been definitely recent efforts to um to make paths through that. Mm to get to um, both the tower on the eastern side and the um, and the pyramid. And you didn't see any, like, um, the area that we're hypothesizing is the inn with the smoke. There's no direct route from this map. There's no direct route to that area, but it looks like there might possibly be trails. There are, yeah. Going from, like, the... the pyramid to the inn, right? Yeah, however, I uh that is that's a bit of like a thing that you probably wouldn't be able to make out from the height. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, it it, it would it would strike you as odd like the inn isn't like astride that old road. It it is not. You know, it's like off to the side near the river. Okay. I have two final questions before I get down unless you guys have any others yourself. Nope. Uh one <laughs> is do I see any obvious like Again, I'm like worried about danger or ambush. Not that there's literally going to be like a wagon that's been banded on the side of the road, but do I see any signs of like struggle possibly in the path ahead? Like someone might have been waylaid in um, transit. That's a good question. If it's possible for me to even see from where I'm at, I understand I'm like asking pretty broad questions. <laughs> no. Okay. Not on the boulevard head ahead, no. Cool. Uh, and. I've forgotten what my last question was going to be. Shit. Well, that's it then. Must not have been important. I'm sure it <laughs> will come back to, to bite you in the end. <laughs> no, dude, I would never. Yeah, let's go. All right. I'm down and back with the boys. Okay. Uh, so now, down um, and looking down the boulevard, um, you see this. If you draw your attention over to um, Albert. Ooh. Oh, I like it. Can I make it bigger? Yeah, there you go. Uh, it's 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 uh, obviously an artist's rendition, so it's a little bit different than this. But um, uh, so yeah, if you're standing at the obelisk, the thing goes forward to the pyramid. You can see the trees on either side. Um, this would be the tower, but the tower does not have like a pointy roof like that. It, <laughs> it actually looks much more like um, it actually is uh, illustrated on the map, like a squat tower with the, only the top floor having. Um, uh, banked with windows on every side. 
That's the um, one to, on the eastern side. On of the it, eastern but... side, yeah. So you're okay. this is actually your vantage point. Like right now, you're like looking up this road, um, and it's the only spot that is actually like forested. Although you can tell it was been landscaped, right? Um, and then the, the the tower itself does jut up from those trees, and of course the pyramid like dominates your vision ahead of you. The uh, the the pyramid or ziggurat, whatever it is, um, we can see it now. Uh, it kind of looks like on this map here that it's considerably better preserved than anything around it. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's definitely showing the signs um, of age. It doesn't, but it does not. You know, it's it's past. Right. It, it's not, and it's the height of Arcanti and Gloria, but but it's definitely one of the more well well maintained buildings. But it like like for well, maybe I'm not close enough, but like it doesn't show any sign of the blast that seems to have affected everything else around here. You, yeah, it def doesn't look like that from from this distance. I'm wondering if it was centered on the. Uh, the pyramid like or emitted from the pyramid rather you do remember i think it was you osric who was actually dwelling on that that there was seemed to be a yeah. clear demarcation line of the different kinds of devastation there was one kind to the west of the road which is what the pyramid yeah. is on, and one kind to the east i think we should go look at the pyramid it's on it's right. on the way i like so um, out. I, uh, I remember my least. question <laughs> okay did i see any boats in any of the water no boats okay. no boats no boats okay, okay. Good question, though. All right. It so I'm hoping good. something funny will happen on the way to the forum. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so you make your way forward. Uh, let me see what our distances are looking like here. Boom, boom, boom. We got some 50 foot squares right here. And we're moving at, I said 100, right? I gave you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, huff, I'm huffing it a little bit to keep right. it. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be three. And uh, I should ask, though, are you, you're moving extra cautious, the normal movement rate? Yeah, the, the cautious pace. Okay. All right, so it's going to take you about... Things can jump out from behind trees like this. So you're moving at, like, dungeon exploration rate, like, like really careful. Like, you're you're kind of moving down that boulevard, looking at the trees, you know, seeing if there's oh, yeah. anything in the shadows, that sort of thing. So it's actually going to take you a full three turns before you empty out into the forum itself. Okay. The trees are healthy, this stand of oaks? Yes. Uh, yeah, let me get back to that. So, um, what we got here? Littered with acorns and old leaves and that kind of thing on the ground? Uh, indeed. Uh, uh, I guess at this time of year, there wouldn't be any acorns. It would be new growth uh, on the oak trees, right? Um, For in April. Yeah. Well, last year's acorns, I guess. Unless there's a lot of squirrels around up here. <laughs> True. Um, John, how, how are we in, like, ambient life? Are there, like, little creatures running around like we would expect, or is it... Uh, yeah, there is, um, there is actually. Uh, any of the normal sort of wildlife that would be here. The, okay. It doesn't seem to be, like, one of those um, haunted, you know, like, where the animals dare not dwell sort of thing. So there's, there's plenty of insects, um, you know, uh, wildflowers, you know, natural growth, that sort of thing. Um, okay. So it's... Uh, Good to know. Yeah, it, it seems like just nature has kind of taken over this, you know, this ruined city in, in the 1200 years since it's existed without human habitation, supposedly. As, as we walk by and uh, like are looking at these trees, because you know, Avarisos is worried that somebody's going to like hop out. Um, he's also curious, like, are there any like carvings on the trees, like initials, you know, you know, uh, uh, that arrows, is actually like that? an excellent question. Ooh. Mm hmm. Uh, Don't it. sleep here. Yeah. <laughs> Look up. <laughs> Give this me. tree kills fascists. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. So you're looking for it, right? Like, yeah. Like you're you're worried that there's something going to pop out. So you're actually looking at the at the bowls of these trees and stuff. And um, mm -hmm. you actually do see that on a couple of them, there is some apparently uh, scratch graffiti on them. Huh. Uh, uh, you'd probably be able to pick out maybe like three, we'll say. So roll me um, a d20. I stray open. D20. Oh. I love this. Th this game has a random graffiti chart. <laughs> <laughs> it's all out of my That's... head. <laughs> I'm just uh, creating it. <laughs> that, that would be a nine. A nine? Okay. Uh, okay. 
you see one, uh, well, okay, you know what? Hold on a second. These aren't going to work. Give me a sec. Okay, Lord. you see one that says, um, uh, it's just a name, and it says Gregor. I had a character named Gregor. I think it's the same guy? Must be. It has to be. <laughs> Absolutely zero chance of otherwise. But, but Gregor was uh, very lonely, he just needed to make his mark. Maybe so he was hoping that he would meet someone and then be able to come back and mark the other name on the tree later. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you find another one that, um, uh, I'm going to say it's the only other one that you find, um, that says, uh, it says Plumthorn rules. How recent do these look, John? Is this, uh, not our content, these... like, like much more. Recent. Right. Right. Yeah. Like speculating other adventures that have passed through here. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. Possibly. Definitely of the modern age. Okay. Or is this maybe, you know, kids from town below that have come up here to smoke pot and drink beers and that kind of thing? Could be. Don't know. It's a bit very, very rough. It's like there is no artistic value to this graffiti. Right. <laughs> um, but there is while he's, yep, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, while he's looking at graffiti, I'm just going to take my staff and poke around in the underbrush a little bit and, you know, looking for where the, how far the flagstones of the road go over and whether there was I don't know if this was you know like a sidewalks here or a little planters or how the trees are planted or what's under the underbrush uh, so there are a, a number of different little side streets that um, kind of come uh -huh. off of the boulevard at different angles but uh, <clears throat> but they you have to look for them most of them are, are you know way overgrown it's the same sort of thing right. that you kind of saw when you looked appeared into the city from whenever you came up yep. um, okay. um but the the main avenue itself is really broad as you as you learn from walking to the obelisk it's like 50 feet wide well set cobblestones and the is the demarcation of of uh the two forms of damage like is it a dead straight line down the center of the road uh that's tough to tell because the road is pretty much functional um but uh, yeah, everything is basically like beyond the trees. You can't really tell because you're in the midst of the trees right now. So okay. the trees are basically um, obscuring your vision to be able to assess that. Gotcha. All right. Um, Keep going. As you, yeah. So as you continue, this is all during that three turns. So as you carefully move yeah. through the trees, nothing accosts you. It's just rather strange to be kind of in the midst of this weird landscape forest. And then you enter out into the forum itself. Um, so it looks like a war zone. There are the stumps of pillars that have been broken off here. Um, all of them appear to be the pillars themselves to appear to be broken off at around between three feet and eight feet in height. Um, the the pillars line the outer borders. It looks like the form itself may have been actually pillared. You know that, that was how they kind of set things up. Um, it looks like the the busts of broken statuary um, is at the feet of these broken pillars. So it looks like the bus actually sat atop these pillars at one point. And those are like crashed and shattered against the, on the ground. Um, and uh, they, you know, their eyes kind of stare blankly and pupilless up at you. Um, there are a number of small trees that have grown up here and there in the forest. Um, uh, you can see that there are numerous stumps that are also been basically like lopped, like sh shorn off roughly at around the same height that the pillars were, around three feet to eight feet high. There are only three large trees of the size that were lining the boulevard that are still um, extant in the form itself. Um, and the largest of them is a massive, at the one that uh, Fargo relayed down to you, a massive and ancient multi-trunked oak tree um, in the center of the form. Um, the ones, the two other ones are basically flanking the southern entrance. So you kind of pass by them on your way into the forum and they actually appear to be maples, um, ancient, old, majestic maples. Is there um, a, is there a hole in that oak? <laughs> 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 on to another After adventure. You. Um, the, the paving stones here are the same kind that the boulevard are made up of, but here they are like really cracked and, uh, stained and, uh, you know, towards the western end, they're actually like more like blackened, um, and a few of them on the eastern end have actually been like blown up out of the ground um, and scattered. 
And some of them have actually been um, kind of pushed up from the massive root growths underneath the, the trees. Okay. So, um, lots of shrubbery. shrubbery. Yeah. So I, as we, I, what I like to do is as we sort of, I'm guessing you mentioned that there were some cleared paths that someone has presumably done to be able to bring a wagon or a horse or even just foot traffic through the forum. Yeah. How, how wide are those? Uh, so they are wide enough just, they're wide enough for a cart. So I would say okay. like, um, what's that, like 10 feet wide, we'll say? Right. Yeah. So if we start walking down one of those, um, I'm looking, you know, I just want to sort of look at the stones and, and you know, see if uh, an inscription or, oh, that looks like, you know, such and such king or whatever. Just sort of see what's interesting. Right. So uh, you, you mentioned busts. I wonder if they're like nameplates. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, um, uh, uh, unfortunately not. If there were nameplates, it looks like... Okay, so let's put it this way. You spend a turn doing this, kind of looking around? Yeah. Um, uh, so, doing that, you, looking sp like carefully at the pillars, you can see that there was once... There, you can see at some of the pillars, there were um, uh, like rivet holes like into the stone, right? Where, where a, a placard might, may have been at one time, but has since been looted, probably. Um, okay. Not every single one of them has that, but there, unfortunately, there is no written indication of any of the dwellings or, or ruins that are here. The paths that you have to take, um, or that are open to you, um, divert around the massive oak tree that um, prevents you from going straight to the pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. um, and in it, in addition, they also have to um, to veer wildly around these huge upheavals of the stones. So it definitely right. looks like the paths were made because um, it, it looks like like the upheavals of the stone wouldn't be too much for like you to just sort of um, uh, clamber over like a normal adventure. But it looks like they were um, whoever made these were trying to accommodate horses um, and or wagons. Um, right. So they, so they, they had to find like a clear path. Yeah. So it's like super windy as they kind of moves around. And there's like I'd say probably like two main ones that you could choose either one. One does skirt close to the um, tower on the east side, and one kind of goes to the west around the tree as well. John, can I ask you something about, about this rubble? You mm -hmm. said that it's kind of like an upheaval. Like, obviously, there, there are like these, you know, um, uh, structures that were all along the outside. Those were kind of collapsed. But in the center, you mentioned there's also a jumble. Does this seem like there was some kind of roof that collapsed? Or is this like, you know, the stone, the paving stones, were they like pushed up? The, b both. So the paving stones have been pushed up, a lot of them by the roots of the of the giant trees, especially the one in the okay. middle. Um, but it also looks like some of them were blown from the whatever cataclysm happened, whatever caused the ruin, right? Um, mm -hmm. um, in addition, there it looks like there was multiple dwellings within this forum as well, not just the ringed amount of pillars. Um, so they like, were... They kind of collapsed in. Yeah, they collapsed. Well, in. Or, or structures. Do structures. You... Structures of some sort, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, so... Well, I hate and podiums and placards and busts and that sort of thing, yeah. but also public buildings, perhaps, you know, like a correct something like that. Yeah, right. Like, like this is like the civic you gather that this is probably like the yeah. civic center. Um, and so all the widespread devastation that you've seen sort of spread out in the city up to this point at your the times that you've been on high. Um, this is sort of like where it's like condensed, like it's just like all of that, like you know, there's like, yeah, oh, yeah. So, which one was the bank? That's the <laughs> so the sun is like like uh, crashing in from the west now as it's starting to set. Um, you probably have about three and a half hours or so, three hours before it sets completely. Um, and uh, uh, it's basically lighting, you know, like the, the the entire western face of that of that pyramid, which is dominating in front of you. It's just like you know, like on that western side, and like it's darkened southern face is um, um, facing you. Uh, uh, blocking out um, any signs of those uh, smoke uh, rain, hmm. trails. That you John, see. if we were um, to hightail it, if we were to hightail it from here to the inn, how long would that take? If you ran, well, I mean, well, like move fast. I just want to know how much time we have to explore. I would like to be at the inn before dark. So uh, I just want to know how much time we have before that happens. It depends on your on your route. Right, like it's a it's a big difference between taking the northern boulevard all the way to the exit of the city, or if you're going to cut um, across the ruins to as the crow flies. Are there, we, don't, we don't know what those cross routes are like yet because we haven't seen them. Yet. You don't. Yeah, I think we should take the road and turn left. 
Okay, so assuming you what you think is the fastest route, I'll just give you the the heads up. So give me a sec. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 with you, Mike. I want to get there before dark. Although, yeah, uh, I uh, I also don't want to walk right past something cool. No, but I mean, I'm assuming you know, as long as we're not dead, we can always come back and and do cool things later. You know, yeah, it'll it'll still be cool in the morning. Sure, if, if and, we live know, in the morning, or you know, we get to the inn and plan changes and we never do come back i'd hate to walk past something that would have been better if you know what i mean we all get jo nice jobs at the end so it's really interesting i can jump it's roughly roughly around a thousand feet away um going by that route uh so if you were going in dungeon time that would take you um uh what's that 10 turns 10 turns yeah uh if you went if you went super slow if now if you doubled your movement rate and nothing happened um, as a result of walking noisily, um, you could uh, feasibly get there in half that time, right? So that would be uh, five turns. Five so turns. basically, if we don't spend too much time exploring, we can get there in under two hours. Yes. Sounds that way. Yep. So I say we look at the the tree and the tower, and and then we go. How's that like sound? The east, eastern path around, go around the, the pyramid and into the north. Yeah, go around the pyramid on the east side. That makes sense. Okay. And that way we get past that, that tower on the forum. So we tree, tower, east side of Ziggurat, head to the inn. Sure. So you guys are sure. like, you guys are literally standing in front of that tree right now. All right, tree. I hope you're being redundant. I'll climb it again. You will climb a tree? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, not, like to not, not too roots. high, not too long, because we we really, you know, we're yeah. trying to make our reservation at the inn. All right, so... Yeah, I'm not trying to explore. I'm trying to keep us from being ambushed, because I'm assuming that's what you all are. Right. Varger, you... Uh, uh, not being ambushed. I'm a big fan of not being ambushed. Varger, you clamber yeah. up the tree um, casually. Um, it's not a big deal. However, uh, the moment you kind of get into the, like, um, the higher branches, uh, you could swear that you could feel the branches actually sort of like shimmy a little bit in response to your presence. Uh -oh. um, I'm going to, I'm going to gently uh, touch one of the branches and say, uh, easy friend. I come not to harm. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. What does the tree say back, John? Well, the tree um, actually got a very wooden expression, I suspect. It does, um, and it, uh, uh, without saying anything, the branch that uh, Varger is on, um, it actually starts to curl around your um, your waist a little bit, Varger. Oh no, Nick, love that. Um, it's I'm very, gonna... it's very gentle though. It's not like it's not like it's like. Is it's it like a hug? Right? Although a python always python. comes at you gentle yeah, as well. Yeah, I was right? gonna say. <laughs> I, I'm going to say, oh, oh, very nice, thank you, and kind of like slip up over that and continue up. I'm going <laughs> to go up, so up and I'm going to that direction. Moving. Okay, okay. A bunch of like smaller branches sort of come up from uh, above as you're kind of trying to break through the canopy, right? Yeah. And they just sort of gently like sort of wrap themselves around like your shoulders and underneath your armpits and like uh, like underneath your butt sort of you know what i mean like just sort of like okay, I, i'm going to uh, get i'm going to get out of here <laughs> so <sweet. laughs> yeah, the tree, I, the tree if, loves you Varg. the tree so, loves so just, you just just to be clear if the <laughs> if the branches are moving slow i'm trying to move quickly so they don't en encircle me right. but if that seems un impossible i'm going to retreat back Makes sense, right? Like, yeah. If I'm aware of this this pattern, I would try to like move very quickly. But if they're just like, they they don't. Yeah, it's, it's very gentle. Yeah. So when you start okay. to when you when you move and retreat back without uh, doing any undue harm to the tree, yeah. Um, the the branches go uh back to their normal position. All right, interesting. Uh, well. I that was I'm back on, I guess um, I'm back on the ground. <laughs> when, you, when you're back on the ground, it, it, you can see the tree just sort of like it, it sort of shakes like a like a you know like all the leaves sort of shake as if it's uh, like a like a dog um, getting rid of water. Did the roots do anything while he was having this experience? No, only the higher branches. All right. Okay. We didn't see any old man willow opening up, uh, sucking in hobbits. <laughs> no, none of that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Out of uh, curiosity, come on down the tree. I, yeah, out of curiosity, if I uncork my water skin and pour a little bit of water upon one of the leaves, does it respond in any novel fashion? Uh, that was brandy. Oh no! <laughs> oh, no, I've got the brandy. You don't, don't you even joke. Uh, if you pour it over one of the like like one of the existing leaves that's like attached to a branch, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, after after you've been dropped back down, or are you retconning this or something? No, no, no. Like I, I wouldn't do it on a low branch after I'm already down on the ground. Okay, all right. Um, it uh, I will say like yeah, the leaf sort of um curls up, and like mm -hmm. like like it's drinking it almost. It's like a very subtle little movement though. Uh, can I prick my finger real quick? Uh oh. Ooh. Oh, mm -hmm. I just want to—I want to prick my finger real quick and drop a blood uh, drop on the leaf and see if it reacts differently than. No blood. reaction to that. <laughs> you blast half the city with fire. But as All right. as you're watching the leaf, though, to this tree. as you're watching the leaf, though, Varger, the other three of you, you see yeah. um, in the massive center bowl of 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 the oak itself before it kind of branches out into these other trunks. Um, there, what you thought was like a crease in the bark um, actually widens a bit and like a uh, what appears to be like a dark green glow and what you could swear looks like an eye slit pries open with like a gentle creak and just um, and then you see that green glow sort of move around and rotate as it sort of takes all four of you in and then goes and and shuts again. Okay. Oh, That's yeah. super unnerving. Um, it would appear I, that yep. nature has yep. uh, returned to its natural balance, my friends. <laughs> um, I think... I think... Please, uh, man, you can't trust the trees. No, no, I think we can trust the trees. They are, mm -hmm. after all, the, the very soil of Mother Earth come to life and sprout in the sun. These are not creatures of darkness and death. <laughs> the tree is wise and old. However, the tree is crotchety and cranky and does not wish to be disturbed, and I suspect we should leave well enough alone and step <laughs> carefully away from the tree. Yeah. <laughs> so, Audric, as you say that, uh, another seam, like a horizontal seam, right near the base of the ground, um, uh, slowly opens up. Like, it's like there's a seam right here, okay? Can you, you see yep. my camera? Okay. And it sort of opens up a little bit like this almost like a mouth of some sort mm. and it, it it moves in like a ripple like this and as it does so some of the roots that are actually been torn that are like breaching the the stone they actually move like fingers like a, like as if they're stretching like a like a like a and they settle uh, and then like this mouth sort of goes and then closes back up again Oh yes, it's lovely to meet you, Mr. T. We're going to we're going to just go away now. Yeah. Yeah, I oh man. A it's, mage it's like, like you just gonna this, leave this, an, an ant? No, I can't leave an ant. Are you kidding me? Uh I'm trying to but, 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 yeah. a, a turn what has gone I? by during this encounter. Put your hand stick your hand in the mouth I'll see what happens. Uh, you got some audio problems there, man. You want you to stick your um, hand in it? Said... <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? I, I, tree, that's for hobbits, man. I'll stick a hobbit in there. Um, <laughs> no, I'm going to bow to the tree and back away and uh, ponder this. And we'll come back and seek wisdom from the tree another time. Okay. All right. Uh, assuming no one else wants to do anything with the tree. Um, I, I, I water the tree a little bit, but involuntarily. <laughs> Yeah, of course, of course. That's not water. Uh, okay. I'll pee on it. Oh, are you peeing on the tree? Fell. Oh my god! I'm gonna pee on the tree. Okay. So wrap him smartly with my staff. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm moving. Stop. When I see this, I am. I am moving away. <laughs> water, Offering in my body's water. What are you talking about? Wrong game. Shy Wrong game. With you. Game. Come on. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, nothing happens when you pee on the tree. Um, <laughs> the uh, on the eastern side, um, uh, not too far away, actually. Just like what did I say? Um, just to be clear, yeah, it's, be it's about like um, 40, 45 feet away, directly to the east of the of that large tree. Um, looks like it was 
built into like the row of pillars that used to exist is this large tower, right? Um, which still stands squat, um, dominating over the former forum here. Uh, so, uh, it is done in that typical Archontian fashion of like the utilitarian, very much like the same sort of architecture that you know that the walls and the towers are made out of, right? At one point, this one is square. Um, has a little bit more of an aesthetic appeal to it, even though it is squat, because it obviously serves some sort of civic function rather than defensive, you assume, since it was here at the forum. Um, uh, so its distinguishing features is the fact that it is completely devoid of any sort of windows at all, except on the highest floor. And that floor, um, uh, so there's four, there are four levels, um, and there are a series of broad, uh, it's punctuated by a series of broad windows that, um, uh, that are on all four sides of it, right? Now down at the ground, facing, uh, where you're facing directly now, facing west, are a, uh, two massive bronze double doors, eight feet tall, um, and they are, like, they stand out from the stone because they're huge bronze monstrosities, right? Double doors. They are carved uh with a bunch of symbols what looks like uh, like uh like artistic symbols there's ibises baboons moons magical glyphs um and they it is decorated all around seemingly in a random fashion multiple iterations of the archontian alphabet so like every letter of the archontian alphabet is represented more than one time in a seemingly random fashion all over um sort of scattered amongst all of these symbols and sigils um, Avaricios, as a, a student of the faith, um, uh, and Osric, you may know as well that the symbols themselves are, um, actually, you know what, everyone would probably know this just from, uh, the vague history lessons that you may have picked up. Nothing about it is too terribly secret because these are the, the most dominant symbols that represent the god Thoth. Um, Ibis is primarily as a dead giveaway, um, but all of them, um, uh, do have an association with Thoth. Baboons, which you've actually heard the real thing. Strange. Uh, moons mm -hmm. um, and magical... Uh, oh, oh, moons. Not magical glyphs or whatever. But yeah, Ibis is baboons and moons. Um, the random letters, is it... It's You said it's every letter in the alphabet, right? Uh-huh. And... Multiple times. They, they, can't, they can't be read, like, in different order. Like, if you read it backwards or read it upside down, it doesn't become words. Uh, to determine that, it would take a turn. Why, why don't we come back to the... I, uh, I think this is very cool. I think we should come back to it. It's a cool thing. It is a cool thing. Uh, are they open doors? No, they are closed. Is there a handle or a pull ring or... Uh, yes, there are t two massive um, bronze metal clasps that are right next to each other, right in the center of the doors. What's up, Mike? I, mean, I, will, say, I will say that this, to this tower looks unspoiled, right? Like, there's an old one in, in John. I go up to the door and see if there's the pry bar marks in the metal. You said they're bronze, so they're going to be fairly soft, you know, uh, to see if there's like scratches if someone was trying to get in. Uh, so, yeah, as a dwarf, um, it's a really good call. You walk up there and you can definitely see that, yes, there have been attempts um, to open these doors. Um, they, Like you said, the bronze is relatively soft and there is definitely dents. Um, and de deformation underneath the, the hasp. Um, and just to be clear too, it does not look like, like age has gotten to the tower. It's just like somehow it escaped the devastation that everything else has suffered. But it's it like one of those like Norman towers, right? Like one of those like square four-sided. Yes. Um, uh, slightly trapezoidal though, right? It's like wider at the base than it is at the top, right? Slightly. Mm -hmm. um, yep. it's squat, but it does have like a... Um, uh, a, a pointed roof. It's not crenellated. Right. Is is the rock rough? It, their fingertips. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But expert, and but expertly carved. It's very different. similar, like in in mortar and um, uh, laying down and all that masonry and everything like that. Like the, the 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 broken towers that you you came across when you entered the plateau. And how are the way the top of the big person to get through? Uh, did you just ask what the, how big the windows are? Yeah, are they big enough for someone to get through? Uh, yes, yeah. If you could, if you could uh, get to the top, um, 
you don't think there would be any problem getting into the windows. Okay. Well, I'm I'm fine with uh, calling this a cool thing to come back to. It's 45 uh, feet tall. Yeah, me too. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it sounds really promising. Untouched, unspoiled. Uh, should we? Uh, actually, why don't we? Can we just do a um, walk around the perimeter before we head towards the ziggurat? Sure. And just you know, look at the base of the tower. Are there? Is it? Intact on all four sides. Are there other openings we didn't see before? Do you want to just kind of give it a quick look-see as you kind of do a perimeter check, or do you want to take some time? Um, let's see. Well, yeah, we've got a little bit of time. I, I, we, I mean, I don't think we're going to find secret doors, but checking the per immediate perimeter of the tower would not be a bad thing. You guys all right, guys? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you can take a turn. All right. Yeah. All right, it is now um, 5 p.m. Okay. And what uh, time is sunset? All right, I think we said 7.30, I believe, right? We'll give you, yeah. oh, we'll say 8. I'll be nice. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> After this, we might want to pick I up give. our pace a little bit. I get yeah, it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, a river to your people, John. However, all thoughts of time disappear. As you are Aha. carefully looking at the base of this tower, and, and um, uh, let me just roll randomly here. Uh, Gorind, that's appropriate. As all Avaricios, Varger, and Osric all conclude that it does, there's featureless, there's nothing really of interest here except for those big bronze doors. Um, uh, Gorin's like, not so fast. On the exact opposite, on the eastern side of the tower, facing outwards towards the ruined city to the east, um, there is a. You, you can see that there is a um, an anomaly in the stone like a like a discoloration uh -huh. that, that, that you that in the darkness because it's on the eastern side right like it was unnoticeable by anybody else but you're like wait um, and as you check it out you can, right. you can see that it is definitely a uh, secret postern entrance oh right. baby <laughs> what's that like you keep you keep cutting like, out. Come, come here, boys. I'm cutting out. Really? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Love me tender. All right. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, let's get a closer guys, look at that. I'll show them what I'm talking about. And I found the door, John, but not necessarily the means to open it, correct? Uh, no, you you also can kind of detect to it. So it's like a pressure plate, and it's going to basically um, shove it in and then to the side. You know, Who needs they, skins? We just found a shelter. Well, I, I, I think I don't know. We don't know what's in there. <laughs> Tell it's gonna out here to go in there and get eaten by something else. John, I'm, I'm gonna speak friend and enter. Okay. <laughs> I'm definitely going. <laughs> this, this hall of Morgan, I want a piece of this. You're really That's leading into the mage. Thing. <laughs> oh yeah, man. Melon. Uh, so you guys, I'm, I'm down with that as well. Yeah, I will light Can a lamp. John. If I trigger the the proper plate, can I trigger it again to close the door? Uh, you mean from the inside? Like if you go in, can oh, are you just going to test to see if you? Yeah, you can close it from the outside. Yes. Yeah. Good to know. And so shut the door before we go in. Wedge the bad boy open real quick, guys, and see if there's an, a mechanism on the other side as well. Does uh, that make sense? I don't have a wedge, okay. but uh, it makes sense. Literally. Be a or something just to make sure it doesn't shut us with putting up some oh, sort of fight. We can't, we're catching like every third word, dude. I think he, yeah. was, he, he was saying he might, he might uh, have to do a quick refresh. I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, it sounds like what you're saying is one of us goes in and checks the ability to open and close the door from the inside. Makes but, sense. But we, we spike it or something so it can't close. Right. Sounds good. Um, uh, so, John, if he opens the door mm -hmm. and he's closed the door, okay, now we know. Mm -hmm. We open it up again. Mm -hmm. I'll light my lantern. Okay. Mark off the and, flask. Uh, yep. And uh, while... Um, well, I'll get to it in a second. Uh, while uh, I'm lighting that, I will, you know, hold... I've got my staff and my lantern, and I will go in uh, while Mike and... or if, uh, Varger is, you know, spiking the door or something like that. I will go ahead and go in. Okay. Test, test, test. Any better? Better. Test, test, test. Okay. Yep. 
Yep. Okay. So uh, you you marked off the lantern. So, yeah, I'm gonna get to it right now. Here, where's my equipment list? So that's like 24 turns in a in a lantern, right? In a full oil flask, something like that. Uh, 24. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I will pour a flask into the lantern and we will light it okay. and go in. All right. Can you just give me two seconds here? Make sure I'm not screwing this, guys in over. In these two seconds, Avaricios is like, I really don't think we should do this. I really think we should... Okay, we can take a peek, but man, we're we going to go get the rest. A rock fell on my head last time and I almost died. <laughs> Just gotta see. Are you, okay. Yeah. Are, you injured? Are you really for real injured? I don't. I didn't remember. Um, you did uh, lose. I, mean, I am horribly, horribly injured. I lost a single hit point, and that's a quarter of my. Twenty-five uh, percent down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A little yep. rock fell in with blink. Uh, I'm sure it was a boulder. You're a tough fella. Let us hope. We yeah. shall find out. Yep. I also have four hit points, but I really want to see what's inside this tower because <laughs> yeah, I'm a mage. I, uh, once you get to, down to my level of three hit points, then we can talk. Yeah. Okay. You enter into a small, into a small dark chamber. It is not lit. All right. It appears to be. It is now. Yeah, it is now. Yeah. Um, it appears to be about ten foot by ten foot. However, um, you're entering in from the um, middle of the eastern side. Okay. The northwestern side appears to be um, a, a diagonal, right? So it's not perfectly square. Um, there are two doors, one on the west, one to the west, and one to the north. And the the uh, sorry, the the walls are actually lined with wooden pegs, and hanging from each of these pegs are 15 sets of what appears to be um, uh, sets of ceremonial robes of some sort. Old and draped. Um, uh, they actually appear to be, most of them seem to be ruined, like they're so old, they're just like basically disintegrated. However, one is definitely made of a finer cloth and is uh, wholly intact. Okay. Um, it is, um, a, this, the other ones are sort of like a, like a brownish, like non-color, you know, as they sort of faded away. This one is um, bright orange uh, with blue embroidery. And it has some sort of um, artistic uh, embroidery on it that you can't quite make out without looking at it closer. Um, okay. And set in the middle of the floor is a five-foot wooden trap door in the middle of the stone. Are there any other uh, means of egress? From this room or yeah, just the way we to the west and, and the to the north. Two doors, trap door. Okay. All right. So uh so I come in, I cast the lantern around, I look around, I see all that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm calling back out to what to them what I'm seeing. I but I'm supposed to be looking for a mechanism to open and close this door. Uh right, yeah. So, so I was gonna go in and look for it, but yeah. Yeah, Gorin. Oh, okay. You wanna I thought you were spiking the door, Mike. You were having Gorin, a hard time. Gorin, it, it is subtle work. Uh, that, that, so it's not like a lever or anything like that. It's it's actually expertly done, um, and very difficult to detect. It was uh, um, it was only because Gorn was with you that you detected it in the first place. So it's similar to the way that it was on the outside, and that it's just a, a, a panel that you kind of depress, and it, okay. it causes it to shift seamlessly into place. All right. So it could be Let's activated from out. either side. You have you have egress right here, so it's fine. So the, okay. the other thing I want to do is um. Well, he's then. Well, then while he's looking for the the door panel, mm -hmm. um, I want to read the embroidery on the the robe, the the good one. Okay, so you pull it out a little bit to take a look, um, like down an arm. Yeah. you can see that uh, the blue embroidery oh, up, see it fits. You know. Yeah. Yep. It's well. Uh, fair enough. It is actually human sized for one thing. Um, it is made out of silk, which probably yep. is why it has uh has uh, survived the ages. Um, uh. Bright orange. Um, the blue embroidery is depicting um, ibises, um, baboons, which is lining up with kind of what you seen before. Signs, signs, um, symbols of love. That is good. Uh, curiously, however, what also is repeated in numerous spots in the embroidery amidst these animals um, is the rather rare 
uh, you kind of have to actually kind of go back in your memory, Osric, a little bit as to what this indicates. But it's the fourth secret name of Thoth, which is um, his, his aspect known as the Light of Comprehension. It's, it's known in... Sorry? Uh, it's written in, like, ancient Archontian, or...? Uh, Archontian, yeah, Archontian. Comprehension. Um... So, uh, and more importantly, amidst all of this embroidery, are there any uh, jewels or gold thread or um, anything like that? No, unfortunately not. Okay. Um, I, in case we need yeah, to disguise. Yeah. I think what I'll do is I'll, uh, I will fold it neatly. Fold you, the rope. Can What's you that? call out that you found this? Yep, yep. Uh, I would say, uh, before you uh, like lift it up, uh, take a look at the peg and make sure the peg doesn't like move or something. Well, you take already... the robe off or pull it with the... Yeah, peg. I'll check the peg. Is it a secret door peg? Does it doesn't seem to do anything weird. Trap kind peg. of pull and pry on it. Now there's there's 15 yeah. of them, right? But Yeah. Well, I do want to look at the other robes as well. But yeah, I'm going to fold this one up neatly and put it in my pack. Okay. I'm going to say like investigating the robe, investigating the door um, simultaneously that took a turn. Okay. And uh and then uh should we should we root through the rest of the, yeah, yeah, Mike. I think we should root through the rest of the robes. Uh, I'd like to do that, but I also as each person comes into the tower, I'm gonna point out the pressure plate that open and close the door. Okay. So that if the guy in and out everyone can, get, can out. get out. Everyone knows. Okay. Cool. Okay. Okay. Um yeah, so uh, once I've put that away, I want to start rooting around through the other robes. If there's any value to them, or something in the pockets, or no, they're basically yeah, do they they're like shreds. Like you touch them, and they sort of disintegrate. There's definitely yeah. nothing of worth there. You couldn't even like wear them as as disguises, right? Okay. So if you are, are you taking the robes, Osric? Yep. Are you putting them on? No, I put them in my backpack. Okay, so that'll be a one a one slot. Yep, I've got it on my chart. Cool. All right, so you got these. Um, uh, other than that, you have this trap door right in the middle, and you've got these doors that are to the west and to the north. So I feel like this is a tomorrow job. That's because you know what? If we open these doors, there's going to be another door and another <laughs> exactly. door and something to look. Exactly. Um, Since we can close it, nobody will still will know. Yeah, I was exactly. worried if we opened it, it would be open and anybody could come by. But yeah, let's let's leave. Let's close it. Maybe even disguise a little bit. Dust our footprints away. Absolutely. We go, you know, we keep on keep on our okay. path. So okay. you, you retreat back out of the tower. Yeah. Um, it was smart of you guys to be moving slowly and stealthily so that uh, no one was uh, uh, no one that you know of has been awakened to your presence as you quietly and secretly close that door again. Uh, and like like Matt said, yeah, let's brush out our footprints and hide any evidence that, you know, like if that moving that door disrupted some vines or moss or something, we kind of. Sure. Yeah. You're yeah. taking the time to do that as best as you can, obviously, but you're, sure. you're not, sure. a, you're not a druid with pass without trace. Right. Um, right. Well, uh, so you, uh, but yeah, you, you take the, uh, actually I should say um, if you want to be really thorough about it and like really have like a real good chance that no one's going to know that you were here, it'll take a turn. That's, I guess, with... Take it. In for a penny, in for a... Uh, Take it. Okay. Take it. Cool. Uh, you can um, shut off your uh, lantern, obviously. Yes. Me. So I'm just going to take that away. I'm going to keep holding it, though. Uh, yeah, just make a make a, make a a mark for that particular lantern, uh, whatever you do on your character sheet, that it's a 23-turn lantern, not a 24-turn lantern now. Um, okay. And then... Uh, just to be super anal about it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, oh, switch back over. And to John, if I'm, just correct me if I'm wrong. I, so I had my lantern in my packed items, but once I lit it, it becomes an equipped item. Is that right? Uh, correct. Yeah. Okay. And so in the event of combat, because I fight with a staff, which mm -hmm. is a two-handed weapon, I can set the lantern down yes. and it'll be fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, th something that we, we didn't, we didn't really do in, although we didn't get into combat a lot, frankly, in, in some of those um, dungeons right. that we were in at Dolmenwood. But with this one, I do want to do a thing like where 
if you tell me that you're setting a lantern down to fight or you're or you're throwing a torch or something like that that there will be definitely because of the general chaos of combat that it, it, there's a decent chance that the um it'll be ruined like it'll go out um and you won't won't be recoverable um unless you take like, the time to like set it in the passageway behind you before you go and politely battle somebody you know right. Right. Excuse me, just a moment. Pardon, pardon me. <laughs> I must yes. put this down. <laughs> Do not stab me in the back while doing so. Thank you. Come on, come on. It's my lantern. <laughs> well, if I smell you, I see your lantern. <laughs> okay, so uh, you come back out into the forum, and I heard Avaricio say that the, the plan was to go um, approach the pyramid and, and skirt around the eastern side of it. Is that correct? Yeah, to stay on the because yeah. we're on that side already. It just it seems. Okay. Very well. In one moment. While I return to the ruined city, one second, please. Uh, there, there were no like as we were like dusting our footprints and like the the this tower didn't seem to provide any like uh, break in that forceful push that knocked everything over, right? Like, uh, did it go around this tower or it sheltered me behind the tower? Kind also, of thing. a very good question. Uh, uh, yes, on the eastern side, I would say that you could see that there, in like the shadow of the tower, basically, um, as the west as the sun was hitting it. Uh, that yes, that area in general seems to um, the, the devastation basically wraps around the tower. You know what I mean? Like so, in the shadow, it's like cool. bare, basically. Okay, so yeah. it did wrap around corner. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, while we're walking along. Uh, it occurs to Osric that, that Faustus, I loaned him two gold, and he found two gold in the fire pit, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, sorry, Gorn. Mike, can't hear you. His, his name's Gorin now, it's no longer I now. Said, oh, right. Who is Faustus? Uh, yeah, I thought you changed your name. I forgot you changed your name to Gorin. Okay. <laughs> oh, your is by someone who's not here. Sorry. I don't know anything you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Except I love really? that picture. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> okay, so... Looks like the debt owed oh, somebody not here. <laughs> no, that yeah. doesn't sound very fair at all. All right, well... Now you're frozen in a very interesting way. It's fine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you... uh, Okay, so you're making your way towards the pyramid now, right? Anything else you want nope, to do here? Pyramid. Eastern, eastern side. Yes, okay. okay. Eastern side. Very well. Now, the pyramid is huge. It's gigantic. As you approach um, in the darkening sky, um, it is uh, 90 feet square. It rises 45 feet above the floor of the city. So it is basically the same height of the tower that you just left. Um, uh, at the summit of it is a 30-foot square platform on top of which is a stone canopy which is supported by marble pillars. Okay. So it's open to the air, right? So there's like four pillars at the very top with like a cap over the top of it. And you can see that in the darkness underneath that roof, that there is some sort of gigantic statue of some sort. Okay. You can't quite make out what it is because it's far above you. Um, and uh, yes, give me a second here. Oh, the light it would probably be like shining almost through like if, if that passes through would we see any kind of like cool shadow or like silhouette of the thing yeah you could yeah it's like but you can't try quite tell what it is it's like just like a big black statue of some sort but the head of it is actually underneath the um the uh platform right you know what i mean like you can't quite the, the angle you're at you can't quite make it out right yeah uh but All it right. doesn't have like a hundred tentacles or something. No, no, no. It appears to be some sort of like bipedal humanoid being of some sort, right? Right. Um, right. You, you, you're making a, a wild assumption. Who knows why? But you have a feeling it might be Thoth, <laughs> judging by the name of the pyramid. Are um, there any like little glowing yellow eyes like peeking out at us no. in the shadows? Of you don't see any sort of movement at all. Um, so the where you're at now at the base, um, there appears to be. Um, uh, 100, well, I'll just tell you, there's, it appears to be a, what, about 120 steps. Um, they are, they're made out of marble and they go, they go straight up the center of each side of the four pyramids. All right. And, um, they are, you can see that they are worn in the center, right. From all the foot traffic that has gone up and down them over the centuries. Okay. Um, 
some of the steps are cracked. Uh, but it looks like, like in places where the marble has cracked, that it's actually sort of rests on granite, which is the base of the entire pyramid. So it doesn't look like the, the steps would actually like give way at any point or anything like that. It's right, a solid right. foundation. Yeah. Mike, you wanted to say something? If we can. I just want to see if this video is there. You switch the headphones. No, it's your connection. Any better. Your it's connection just, is breaking up a little connection. bit. If someone else in the, is in the household using like streaming video or something like that, that could be the issue. Um, I wonder if I can kick this off. Uh, <laughs> you kids, you get off your entertainment. So uh, that that's what you see at a, at a at a brief cursory look, right? So the steps themselves are marble. Yeah. The the pyramid in general is granite. So the steps sort of yeah. like um kind of stand out right they're like more white than, than the rest of the surrounding pyramid so um the the image in the map kind of makes it look i can't tell if it's like i'll just say it. so the the steps are cut in and then the corners are they smooth or are they like a ziggurat with like they're like a they're more like a ziggurat well no that's not true that's not true they're smooth they're, they're smooth, smooth. Yes. so so, and that part's granite, but the steps are marble. Correct. So it's like gray and white. Right. Exactly. Kind of thing. Yep. Okay. You got it. And so if you were to walk up the steps, you could slide down the side, sort of. Correct. You know. It'd be rough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wee is mandatory. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the platform at the top has four or many columns. It has uh, four. So Four big columns. Yeah. So that's a little then, bit inaccurate there. Yeah. And then the roof on top of that, is that also pointed or is it no, dead flat? That's flat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, the, go ahead. No, no, I've, I was, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious. So like, you know, the, the pyramid is really cool. Um, and he's just curious. He takes a look behind him, that big road heading due east. Yeah. What, yeah. What's going on that way? Okay, so yeah, uh, kind of going to the corner and looking east, um, you see that it is like a, a near identical duplicate of the same sort of construction as the one that you came on. It was obviously like the the, the major east west thoroughfare. Um, for whatever reason, um, it could well actually based upon what Varger told you when he's atop the obelisk. Um, the, the reason may why it may not have continued on from the western side of the pyramid is that it would quickly run into the um, the, the the large ruins that you saw in the midst of the river, like it would hit the river basically. But there is obviously, um, you can see that there, uh, because there's not obstructed by trees, that there is a uh, a road that goes east. It is, you know, it, it's still kind of rough. There's still ruins and stuff like that across of it. But it's um, it's definitely been used recently. Like there are pat, like you know, it's a clear road. Um, okay. And you can see that it goes out way off in the distance, um, lit by the westering sun. It is uh, an eastern gate out outwards out of this out of there. However. Um, not too far from where you're standing right now, you do catch a glimpse of something which looks rather interesting. Um, one moment, just so I can give you a distance here. On that road? On, On that road. road, yeah. Actually, yeah, a little yeah. bit off to the side. So okay. about uh, about 150 feet away from where you're standing right now, which is at the southeastern corner of the pyramid, um, a little bit okay. south of the road itself, you see that there is a something... Uh, it almost looks like a well, you would think. Like it's a round structure that's only a couple feet off the ground, right? Made out of stone. This thing. Okay. But um, but the only reason that you notice it is that it appears to be giving off a a um a glinting light, like a like a, a very bright light coming from within it. So it like immediately catches your eye, like a jewel almost. You know what I mean? Would you mark it on the map what we're looking at, John? Is it this thing right here? Uh, no. Or is it? It's the other one, the closer one, right? The closer one, yeah. Yep, yep that's it. Yeah, that. oh. Does that oh, light appear to be flickering like a torchlight might? Uh, no, actually. Uh, is it have, does it have the color of a natural fire or something different? Uh, I'll tell you in one sec. One moment. So I get it right. Like it's like it's light coming up out of the well, kind of thing. Sounds that way. You may have found the uh, the Ark of the Covenant. Very dangerous. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be handy. 
It's wood. Um, it is a. It it, it 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 does not appear to be firelight, um, but it is like a warm, flickering light. Um, I'm not not flickering. I'm sorry. It's a warm, consistent light. Well, I say we go look. I look in the right. hall. What time it's, is it? It's it's just right there. Right now, it's almost five thirty. Yeah, we're good. Let's go. You want to head I over? I want to see what. Look in the hole. Okay. Yeah. I do so... not look in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> I will look in the hole. Another, um, mm-hmm. like approaching the pyramid, then going to this well is going to take another two turns. Yeah. Um, so you get there, moving slowly. Obviously, you, you just tell me if you're moving quickly at any point. Um, yeah. So, uh, so there is a, a rel- so you're going down the eastern boulevard, and there appears to be like this sort of obscure path which sort of leads south off of the boulevard, um, and uh, it leads to what appears to be a uh, a small courtyard of sorts, um, and in the midst of which um, is this uncovered well with a three foot tall frame. It's about five foot in diameter, and there is light emanating from it. Well, that seems legitimate. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm guessing uh, it, is it like lantern light we're seeing? Would I characterize it having just had a lantern lit? Does it look like to me like a uh, torchlight or lantern light or it's it it's not oh, not any sort of light that you've really seen because it it doesn't flicker, right? Yeah. It's just, I'm it's definitely just, it just continues. Yeah. Do you want to like hold your staff over it or something? See, oh, I want to look inside and see it. Okay, you go right there. Does anyone have a mirror? Do you have a mirror? Oh, uh, Varger has one. I do. You can use mine. All right, I'll use the mirror. Okay. Uh, so you put your hand over, I guess, holding the mirror, sort of? Yeah. Okay, so you can see that your mirror actually reflects what appears to be a lot more mirrors. The entire inside of the well itself appears to have um, shards of glass that have been embedded into it um, that are uh, expertly placed so that it reflects almost infinitely um, some sort of complex, you know, lighting mechanism. Mm-hmm. Like... Embedded into the walls in the sense of the shaft is a uh, smooth but reflective, or yeah. is it like all jagged? No, it's not jagged. It's smooth okay. but reflective, yeah. I wonder if this is some kind of light well that brings light down. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it down into Thoth, a I mean Thoth is the god of like light and knowledge, so maybe I could see that connection probably. They're um they're convex oh, yeah. which I, so they're convex, so they're slightly bubbled. Right, so right. It's, it's almost like a pebbly skin, sort of. Yep. Um, yep. And okay, so now I'm going to stick my head over the edge and look down. Okay, so it goes way down. Right, the entire thing is uh, completely lit, um, and there are no rungs. Um, it doesn't look like there's any sort of device at all for negotiating down the well, and there's no um, crossbar with like a pail or anything like that. Right, it's just an open pit, basically. Um, uh, was and, there evidence that there used to be like a glass top or something that's no, gone? No, no. But the but the what, workmanship what? the workmanship is stunning, and just the sheer foreignness of it. Like like why do this? You know what I mean? And the and the, but the amount of dedication and skill it would take to do it is sort of mind boggling and, and unnerving at the same time. Like you've never heard of anything like this. Bizarre, completely well, beyond your well. Comfort. While he's bending over and looking down, can I go behind him and just give him one of those little bit of... <laughs> just a little bit. I, I, the light I, of comprehension reveals you're a jerk. <laughs> Mike, what's does, up? Does, does anyone else think that this might be um, bringing light down to like a settlement with a dungeon kind of thing? Whether settlement right. or something. I mean... Uh, you know, Thoth is the god of uh, light and knowledge, so I can see how this would be very important to him. I, I would venture to guess Mike is right, that if there is a space down there, <clears throat> there would be a prized location. Even if it, you know, wasn't meant to be a settlement, like it was meant to be a priest's chambers or something, I'd be willing to bet someone's down there now. Because Would it, it, would it be worthwhile? Or with solar or something like that? Sorry, Mike. Or will be worth I'll just pull the cover well to go cover it up and see what comes out to to fix it. 
I like it. <laughs> <laughs> wait, we're going to hide and wait. Yeah. All about the time. Uh, you should also note too that on the eastern side of the courtyard, um, it looks like there is actually a, a, a ceramic chimney of sorts that rises about two feet above the ground. It's about three feet by two foot rank, uh, rectangle. Um, so it looks like this, like the chimney survived the devastation of what sort of building may have been here at one time. It doesn't so extend chimney, down. It's just like building up. Uh, it, it depends on if you look at it. You know, you, you oh, just see like there's yeah. sort of like this freestanding chimney that was looks like it was once part of like the walls of a building. Yeah, I'm going to go in and stick my head and then look up and look down. Uh, yeah, and I'm thinking uh, maybe Varga should come over and listen at this tube. Uh, so the, looking up at the chimney, obviously, it's like it just sort of, you know, it's in ruins. You know what I mean? Like it's like a freestanding chimney out in the middle of the open, right? Um, but um, but uh, looking down, you do see that uh, that it does go down and it goes down underground. And you said it's about two feet in diameter? Uh, it's uh, three feet by two feet. Oh, three feet by two feet. That's mm -hmm. pretty wide. Okay, it, so it, it's complete, here, completely guys. dark, but it actually goes, it does extend underground. Okay. Burger, do you hear anything uh, coming up from the, the tube of light? Uh, I do not. Do I hear anything coming out of the tube of light? Let's see. One moment, please. Yeah. It's inter I wonder if um, the whole city is dotted with things like this, and or was, would have been, or um, if this is specific to something that's just directly under the ziggurat and the tower and the sort of center of the city. Hmm. hmm. Maybe okay. maybe when we maybe when we come back tomorrow we can swing around the other side and see. Yeah. Symmetry is probably a thing. We could probably look and see if there's something. Yeah. At the same place on the other side. Barger, you uh, put your ear uh, to the. Uh, you stick your head into the chimney and, and listen downwards. Um, echoing up from the uh, some some bottomless pit. You have no idea how far go down down it goes. You think you can hear the sound of um, contented simian hooting. Oh. Okay. I don't know if what is worse, contented simians or discontented simians. Um, discontented. <laughs> discontented. <laughs> Definitely discontented. <laughs> so, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a series of complex mirrors refracting light all the way down this. Yeah, no, the well. There's two different things that you're two different holes. Oh, you're looking I'm at. listening. I thought I was listening at the well, not the chimney. No, okay. So uh, I'm going to say you're listening at the chimney, even if you meant the well. So that so that everyone's clear. The chimney. Yes. It's a freestanding chimney on the eastern side of this courtyard, which you now probably can surmise was the borders of like a, a dwelling of some sort, or maybe an inner yes. courtyard within a wider dwelling. But there's a chimney oh. here at one point. Um, that mm -hmm. chimney goes down. You can hear the simian hooting. The well, which is in the center of this courtyard. Right, um, has is the refractive light that you can hear nothing. Okay. 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 What's the distance between them? Twenty feet? Ten feet? Uh, double check. One moment. I suspect the chimney goes. Uh, yeah, about twenty far feet. More uh, twenty feet. I figure, I suspect the chimney is far more shallow than the well in terms of where it reaches. Could uh, be. That's true. They don't necessarily have to go to the same place. That makes sense. Um, can I go any... over to the well and just uh, whistle a bird call, or my best approximation of a bird call, into the well and hear it echo, and uh, see if like, I get a sense of depth? Hmm. Fool of a took? Or like a, a large expanse <laughs> of well. Like, if it feels hollow versus like sort of large, it's that makes sense? Yeah. I mean, it, you, you're just trying to determine, like, if it's an illusion or something like that? Like, maybe it's not as dark, deep as it looks? I think he's trying to use sonar. I'm trying to basically whistle to get a sense of both its depth and if there's a large chamber 
blow or not right is like it, is that is that doable like human wise is that I don't, is that a thing i mean if you're in a cave <laughs> the, 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 the echoing of the cave or like a mountain or something like that right would change it's with if uh, you're yeah. like literally batman not the superhero but actually batman man <laughs> maybe you could use that little... yeah i don't think it's, no, it's... if you're if you're flunking you can whistle in a cave and it's fun and and it's very flat if it's a small space and it's very echoey in large it's large space well i just don't know if there'd be a difference between like what you would hear an echo in of of the wells size itself versus yeah. whatever it empties out into um right, so that's... i don't think you could determine that but it, you but you definitely you you hear a whistle um and and it is brightly lit so i will tell you this uh one moment uh Sorry, I gotta find the hop in, hop in between things here. Um, yeah, that's right. I, guess um, I might see a surface eventually. Yeah, like usually big pits like this, it's like oh, you know, it's an endless pit. You can't see the bottom, but this is like lit. Like the entire thing is like lit all the way down. So yeah. um, you can see that it goes. Let's say this: it goes down at least two hundred feet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Straight right. down. John, I, I have a, a, a question about the area around that chimney. Does it look like, um, oh, I don't know, say simians ever like come out that way? Are there like little claws or no, footprints actually, or no. anything like that? No, and um, it would be like three feet by two feet. Like, yeah, you could feasibly do it, but like it, it would be extremely claustrophobic, right? Like it would be not be a pleasant experience, you know? Um, like chimneys are not meant to be, you know, uh, have people inside. Right. Guys, would you be upset if it took a lot of size to make and drop into the well? Uh, I don't think we should do this. Um, just because I think like this seems to be a light, a, a way to bring light down there. Yeah, I don't want to. If wanna we're go, if we're going down, it would break the light. Also, whatever is down there might make it mad, and they might come up. I'd rather not shatter the glass. I think I think like covering it is a good idea if we want to put like uh, branches over it or something like that, just to see, like you suggested earlier. Right. Although I would say it's getting close to the end of the day anyway. It presumably does not Maybe generate light at night. Do it in the morning if we're going to do it. No point in doing it now. Also, oh, I mean, I could God. see. I mean, let's think about it this way. This is the area of Thoth. Thoth is the god of light and knowledge. If we are actively like taking away light from a thing, that would be seen as like antithetical to whatever is going on here for them. So if there are worshippers of Thoth or something down there, this would be like an act against him. I'm not sure that's what we want to do. Man, your outdated belief systems don't affect me, man. We want to recover <laughs> on this well, man. Uh, this is very true, but. Uh... Yeah, no, it's fair. We might piss off some cultists. It's possible. Or a bunch of contented simians. I don't want to piss off the contented simians, because we don't know what made them contented. Or we um, also don't right. know what made them simians, if you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> that, that you just keep on going back and back and back. Oh, uh, now you're thinking. <laughs> They're <laughs> simians, simians all the way down. Who's so to say these are always apes? <laughs> it's... Oh, we better get a move on to the end, guys. <laughs> Let's go. This is getting okay, whack. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna you're gonna not gonna go down the, sh the well. Oh no, heck no. no. Okay. No, no. All right. Well, that I mean, uh, investigation took a turn. Um, there's YOLO, and there's we only have a hundred feet of rope for a two hundred foot well. So no, we're not going. <laughs> Fair, down enough. This Fair enough. Yes. <laughs> okay. Here's here's a here's an idea though. What if we? It looks like there's this little narrow road. What if we go there yeah. instead of like back towards the big? Right. Right, that could just be fun. Like go up here and then let's still see. Good game, sure. Okay. Take a, take a side street. Maybe Going find a cute little path. Path. All right. Take, take, take this alley. A cafe, take this something. Nice way. Okay. I think this calls for another uh, another dram. If we're going off the beaten path. <laughs> okay, so moving across, that's going to be. Let's see here. We got a little bit of. Cheers. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six. It's 300, 300. So that's going to be three turns. Three turns uh, when you approach what appears to be a collection of ruins there at that juncture, as you can see. 
I'm pointing it out. Correct. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Um, so just kind of, as you kind of carefully approach this, this, you know, where, where this small little road, um, ends, you can see that it does nothing really of interest to this small public road, except that it does appear to be slightly taller than any of its neighbors. So it does stand out as like a point, like a landmark that you can get to, um, took you about three turns to get here. So it's approximately about 620 right now. Um, uh, definitely getting darker now. You're definitely like in tw like full on twilight now, right? Um, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So you're yeah. That's basically on, on careful inspection. It just looks to be like a larger parlor, like the taller. Like might have been a little bit more important, but that's just on a casual inspection. Once again, okay. yeah, I don't want to go in. So if um, we were to uh, turn down this road right here. Mm -hmm. oh, um, that's what I was thinking to go away. Right. And then we come onto the boulevard. Do we see a path right here? Uh, that, like it looks like we're seeing on our map. Do we actually see that? Uh, double check. Uh, yeah, there is. Yeah. There's a, yeah, there's a slight, like, it's like a little bit less strenuous to have. To, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's not I'm so much thinking... of a path. It just seems to be like, there's like an area that is clear of rubble. You know what I mean? So, it, right. so much of that would be a path. Because <laughs> we could go that way and avoid the the towers at the city gate there, which mm -hmm. may or may not be friendly. That's what uh, I'm thinking. I mean, if it, can we see the from where we are? Can we see the smoke against mm -hmm. the like sunset? You sure can. Yeah. Oh yeah. Let's make a beeline for that smoke. Just kind of a... Wait, no, no, no. The smoke is from the towers at the gate at the end of the boulevard. Oh, he's, he saw smoke both, from they, the they towers, the and he thing. saw smoke from the inn, too. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. We can, are they, we can see both of those things now, yes, clearly, though, right? You sure can, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, if we can see the smoke from the inn, I say we go off-road and beeline it straight to the inn. Okay. Yep. Uh, so you can c continue onwards. Um, you cross the road. Now, as you, as you hit back onto the road, uh, let me check the map again how long. The turn, um, and as you as you're kind of like, this is the point where you're kind of looking for that path, right? Looking at the smoke, you can see that the two towers in a north gate actually have um, fires lit now. Or, well, they did have fires lit, but you can clearly see them now in like the the burgeoning darkness. Um, and when you made the decision to go off road, you actually hear from one of the towers. You think it's the western one. You hear a "Who is there? Who goes there?" In a thick um, Arcantian accent. Oh, they can see us all the way. To... Okay. How far is that? How far away? That's got to be uh, five hundred feet. No, um, it's about um, two hundred feet. Uh, I'll shout out. Uh... Oh, what are you doing? They, they see us already. Uh, I'll, sh I'll sh I mean, They're like looking at us clearly. <laughs> I'll, I'll wave, you know, like uh, congenially and say, uh, "Ho, oh! ho oh, there! We're <laughs> travelers looking for the broken-headed inn. We hear tell it is nearby." Aye, that it is. Travelers from from down south. I should actually say I made a mistake. They're not. It's not an Arcantian accent. It's a Thorkin accent. Oh, okay. Oh, that's all right then. Thorkins. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that makes it all the uh, Thorkins. Uh, I'll, I'll say... Uh, You're wandering uh, around in the dark. Why don't you have any lights on you? Oh, is it dark now? Well, it's pretty. It's twilight. Twilight. Yeah. Twilight. Uh, the, Liable to I'm get afraid, hurt. I'm afraid the journey was uh, quite strenuous and we are a bit lost. Uh... Might you direct us to safety, friend? What are you on about up here? We heard horrible noises from down south. Um, I'm going to take a glance at my party mates real quick before I respond. Uh, I didn't hear anything. I'm going to... I'm. Uh, uh, I mean, we got to tell them something. We could say, like, the Simeons... Well, you don't say anything. You say you didn't hear anything. I didn't hear anything. Did you hear something? No, I didn't hear nothing. 
Uh, I don't know why you're I, acting I, like that. I heard stuff. There was a bunch of like simian sounds. They were content. Yeah, gorillas. Yeah, okay. I heard gorillas. <laughs> sure, yeah. Well, yeah, they're likely to kill you, the baboons. That's not what we're talking about. Let's get out of the shadows. Come this way. We'll, t- we'll point you towards the broken head. All right. All right. What I'll the heck? Over. Um, I'm going to dust myself this point, off and go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, at this point, John, I think we can stop sneaking cautiously. Like, we've been spotted. Yeah, you want to? Let's just, let's just walk there. If, if, if it takes us 20 minutes to walk the 200 feet to them, they're going to be like, what the fuck's wrong with these guys? <laughs> Are they yeah, going like... so slow? Are they blind? No. I don't have my shield in front of my body. Okay. <laughs> Gordon's like, but I don't trust these have humans. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dust myself off and look, look as uh, non fifi as possible. All right. I will, um, so you I see... will address them in Thorkin, if, by the way, if they... Okay. They're speaking in you know, or are they speaking in our content? Uh, okay, so they you could see as you kind of approach the base of the towers that indeed there appears to be um, four of them in total, uh, two in each tower. They um uh, they have a, a large um what do you call it like a, a brazier uh, yeah uh, in each tower, but they also have like torches that and they're basically like, leaning over the the wall um, and peering down with like torches down at you, um, and you can kind of see their faces and they're 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 armored. Um, just wearing like studded leather armor and they've got, uh, 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 what you could see anyways. Um, you can see that they have like bows that are strapped across their shoulders. Um, but they have like a, like a small, like Saxon helm on sort of thing, like with like the nose guard, um, um, as they kind of peer down towards you. Uh, and they, 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 they're kind of looking at you a little bit suspiciously and they're like, ah, and they kind of sizing you up and they're, oh, a dwarf from Castledor, eh? From the west? <laughs> yes, from the west. Again. Yes. <laughs> Most recently from Gosterwick. <laughs> ah, from Gosterwick, are you? All right, we've been seeing more of them around. All right, well, the broken head. You can put your feet up. Go talk to, to Kronos and his lovely wife, Estelle. Have a nice cup of ale. Um, even bed down if you like. And they point off towards the west and, you know, you know, you kind of know where it is. Yeah. Where that smoke is, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for you, but nothing should harm you should you make it there before the sun sets west. You'll get there in time. Well, what's up with the dragon? Oh, the oh. dragon. That's, uh, that's old uh, Krastoranex. You don't want to be uh, getting on his bad side. Um, John, do I see uh, any key rings hanging on anyone's belt uh key rings no yeah uh, in fact you don't see their belt because they're they're waist they're behind a wall waist high up high are we talking monty python behind a wall yeah they're or? like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they yeah, exactly. yes exactly. uh 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 will we see, if we head to the end will we see you there tonight gentlemen uh we're here all night long just in case there's any dangers that come out of the city uh can can ah, we bring you a, a warm meal, perhaps, or or anything you may need? Well, I, if you fancy coming out at night, I wouldn't recommend it. But we're we're really well stocked out here. Kronos takes care of us. So you work for for Kronos, then you're guarding the inn from the city. Aye, that we do. I see. I see. You're not. Uh... We rotate out. We try to catch any newcomers to the city. Point them there. Point them to the inn. I see. Friendly gesture, don't you know? And oh. what what what, what, kind of, yeah, what what kind of things come out of the city at night? <laughs> all, all sorts of bad things. Thankfully, they don't. Be, they usually maintain themselves. They usually uh, stay within the bounds of the walls themselves. There's all sorts of crocodiles and s- giant snapping turtles coming out of the lake, and all those <laughs> wild baboons that come out from the tower on the eastern side, and. Why? Just the other... looking around, like, <laughs> say what? <laughs> Turtles? <laughs> Crocodiles? Well, we've even I seen mean, some of those beast men everywhere. They try to be secret about it, but we've seen them coming out, all dressed in their Arcantian war gear. Don't know what they're on about. But beast men, you say? Beast men, yeah. They've got the heads of animals, pigs and dogs, rats, all sorts of things. Heavily armed, like troops they were. The tour guide definitely left this out of the description. 
I don't, it's an ill omen to speak of these things when night's falling, so you should probably talk to Kronos about it. But there was just an expedition that Kronos sent out. Men like us, friends of ours, drinking companions, he sent down to the Tower of Scrutiny down there in the Forum. They went in, climbed up into the windows, and never were seen again. Oh my. Okay then. Is that the tower with the big bronze doors? That's the one I. You probably passed it. Yeah. And let's yeah, not yeah. forget about cross next. Whatever that sound was, it got him in a tizzy. We saw him flying around today. It's been weeks since we saw him. Where does he live? You show you it was a huge grinding sound. You couldn't have missed it. You must have been in the city at the time. You grinding didn't hear anything. Sound. Really? Uh Whoa, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it was very loud by the waterfall. Ah, <laughs> oh, never you mind. Anyways, you're liable to. You're not going to survive the night if you if you don't go over to the broken head. So open doors. I'm heading there now for an ale. Tell him we sent yeah. you. Uh, I found uh, two gold. I found two gold in a, in a fire pit. I'm buying first. I do want to ask it? the guard. Is there anyone we should look out for there? You know, unruly types. Oh, uh, you never know. There's always some sorts of adventurers coming in and out of there. But you hasn't. Uh, we haven't seen too many recently, so you'll be the first. They'll be all happy to see you. All right. But uh, you'll you'll meet some of the regulars there. Good people. <laughs> Nothing to worry about. All right. Sounds good. Long as long as you're honest yourselves. I, I, my mother always told me I was the honestest lad that she did ever. Uh, Lay eyes upon rear. <laughs> yeah, but your mom was a liar. I mean, come on. <laughs> Everyone knows I, I, that. I can, I can tell you might want to work on that one a little bit. It's coming out a little rough. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, so it looks like there's probably a path right from here straight over to the inn. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah I think just, can, let's just do that. Head over right over. Okay. Yeah. So they wish you well, and you head over um, towards outside the city, finally, right? Um, you can see that the land um, in the dwindling sunlight uh, just basically uh, explodes outward from, from the city, a, a vast plain uh, with mountains in the distance. Um, and the uh, the road just shoots like a straight arrow through these plains. You don't know how when, when it finally dwindles away, but... Um, but you immediately leave that road and you head over toward the welcoming um, uh, light coming emanating from the windows of the broken head. So as you finally approach it, um, and by the time you actually get there, you know, it, it's like a near thing, right? Like you get there right whenever the sun actually basically sets, we'll say, right? So um, okay. uh, as you approach it, you see that um, it's a very, uh, what's the word, um, unbecoming place it's like it, it, it's like bare bones you can tell that this place has basically been built from the ruins and pieces of the city itself right uh so there's a solid foundation it's basically two stories a solid foundation of old stone um made out of like scavenged stone blocks so it's like not not expertly put together right um and there are uh uh yeah so solid stone on the ground and then there is um a f no windows on the on the ground floor at all the upper floor is made out of wood, um, and with the supporting beams sort of jutting out of the stone, sort of allows the 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 wooden second floor to be a little bit larger in area than the bottom floor, right? And that has um, a few narrow windows set into it, but not not a lot of them. Um, and that's it; it's just flat like that, right? Um, so it just looks like a like a blockhouse. Now there is a connected L uh, attached to it, which is a stable um, with a large, like fifteen foot wide door, a uh, wooden door. Um, but there doesn't appear to be any connection to the from, it, from the stable to the inn itself, um, and then there are several like much less fortified buildings, um, outbuildings that are scattered nearby. There's like you can tell there's like a smokehouse, um, a, a separate kitchen, an actual kitchen that's separate from the from the inn itself, and two different um, smaller storehouses. Are there any latrines? Uh, yes, and there, yes, there are a couple of outhouses as well. Um, right. Now, what dominates uh, your interest though as you approach the front door is that there is a huge um stone head that has been mounted above the uh the entrance to the in itself um and it is six feet in diameter 
with oval staring eyes. Um, uh, it looks like the, the pupils themselves actually used to have insets, but they are now empty. And it is wearing a, like, a Corinthian helmet, like a very, like, Greek-looking, like, helmet, right? Massive, like, six feet wide, huge thing. Um, and it is obvious when you look at it, uh, based upon what you saw when um, you approached the falls themselves, that this is a depiction of the head of Arden herself. Gotcha. It's Which still had weird. Like... What, Mike? That thing's weigh like a thousand pounds. They have it mounted on. Uh, you don't know how it's mounted. It's just like it's it's right. mount, mounted above, like ratcheted above the door on onto the stone. Um, so the, the you, Arden we we saw had its head though, right? This isn't uh... mm -hmm. no that 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 head was huge, like a massive. Yeah, okay. yeah this, yeah, this is, is from some other place in the city. That's okay. correct. Yeah, yeah. John, well, baby Arden. Uh, can we see the shoreline of the river from here? What's the sense of scale? Of this, like, area. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. How... Well, like, we're looking at a map, but I know it's just an artistic representation. I'm wondering if the inn is adjacent to the river. Like, I could walk over to the river very easily, you know, from the inn, or if it's, like... Oh, just how far away is the river? Uh, yeah. It's yeah. about 100 feet away. But okay, it's, it's close enough that this is obviously, like, like where they get their fresh water from, where they probably bathe. Yeah. You know, okay. or anything like that. where they would water the horses that sort of thing um you do also see that there's there's um some activity around um as you guys approach uh there you see that there are a few uh hands that are working uh the area like uh like coming from the kitchen to the um in you see every once in a while there is like a, a female um looks like an archontian like a uh, woman it goes back and forth there are a couple of um uh, Thorkin boys that actually kind of come out from the stables um, and they kind of peer out, uh, kind of stare stare balefully at you, look around, see that you don't have any horses, then disappear without like a word. Aww. Um, we're, we're working on it. <laughs> um, but you do, you do hear some light talk coming from inside. Uh, John, one last... Yep. Oh. I was just going to ask, sorry, sorry, David. Uh, before we go inside, on our, on our way here, I just, this would be an easy thing to notice. Did that uh, destruction that we have seen uh, on the western side of the that center road, did it extend beyond where the uh, walls are? Or did uh, it no. stop at the walls? No, it basically stopped. Yeah. Oh. Far out, man. Um, uh, that yeah. was it. Yeah, we can go. Before we jump in, can we do a quick bathroom break? Uh, sure. Okay. Absolutely. We will be right back after we go pee. Bald head and goatees, man. There's... Here we are. We're back. First thing oh. they hear is bald heads and goatees. You got to do something. It's a brotherhood. And beard. It's a brotherhood. That's, that's, is that the rebrand of the YouTube channel? Bald heads and goatees. Bald heads and goatees. It's the Larry, the Larry uh, David thing. The bald heads. Uh, uh, shiners and soup catchers. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's actually quite catchy. Uh, 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 before we go in, can I just do a glance and see? I see any graffiti or thieves camp oh, that might be thieves camp marked around the various buildings as we walk by. A uh, good question. No, uh, it appears that this place is actually uh, simple but well maintained. They don't put up with any graffiti. All right. Cool. Or thieves, no doubt. Yeah, or thieves. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you'll be sleeping in the stables there, Varger. They'll spot you as soon as you walk in. I guarantee it. So, uh, in you go. Um, you walk uh, be beneath the stone head of Arden. Which stales balefully down upon you and into the warm embrace of the broken head. Um, inside. Is there like a ping that happens when we hit the save point? Of the, <laughs> the... <laughs> uh, there, there is definitely a psychological ping um, as the yeah. arrowing journey that you've had so far um, uh, is it comes to a, to a reprieve as you are actually amongst a, a small, tiny bastion of civilization amongst the darkness here. Um, and inside, um, you see that it is basically a single smoky common room with a large fireplace um and there's numerous sturdy wooden tables and uh, tables um there is a large fire that is keeping keeping everything relatively warm and there are actually uh, the light that is coming from within um besides the light coming from the fire um uh, the, the whole place is actually very well lit and it's continuously lit because they're um and it's rather strange as you just normally associate you know, an in with like flickering, uh, 
firelight and stuff like that. Um, and you look for the source of it and you see that at two opposite ends up on little shelves are actually two small pebbles where there is continuous light emanating from them constantly. Just um, nice. And so it's like, they, do they buzz like that? They do not buzz. Sodium pebbles. <laughs> um, we should totally not steal those. So it's very, very bare bones, but it is relatively clean. Um, it's smoky. Um, and there are uh, approximately about like four or five people here. One of them seems to be like a, um, a guy huddled over his uh, uh, drink and he has like a long, um, like hawk like nose um, and uh, sort of a, um, uh, what's the word for it? Like, um, uh, sketchy sort of look to him uh, a little bit as he sort of peers up at you um, and goes back to his drink, but his uh, his eyes sort of widen when he sort of looks at your um, at your uh, panoply, like at your get out, your your you know all your weapons and armor and stuff. And um. there are uh, three other gentlemen who you and you notice this um, all very different looking in size and shape and all kind of stuff, but are all dressed in sort of wealthy, well-made robes of some sort, like traveling robes, um, who are standing at the bar and they appear to have their heads huddled together. But when they see you come in, they quickly like separate and they, um, they start to like vocally sort of start to argue about different things about like the prices of wares. And, um, uh, you hear like the mention of statues, um, and what they're going for from the ruins and stuff like that as well. And they're, they're arguing about that. Um, and uh, there's a couple of, uh, uh, are there men or women? I think they're, they're actually just men. So there are uh, a couple of men walking around um, serving food um, and whatnot. A couple of cooks, uh, the same women that you saw coming from the kitchen from outside, kind of come back and forth delivering food. Um, and then uh, behind the bar, you see that there are two people. They appear to be a couple. There's this obviously must be Kronos and what you assume to be his wife. Um, Kronos is a, um, let me get it here real quick. Burp, burp, burp. So, uh, Kronos is a fully bearded guy. He is, is, he lives up to his name of Kettlebelly, which he has like really, really kind of big gut. Um, he is wearing leathers. Um, and, uh, his wife is actually dressed, um, uh, surprisingly like, more like a noble, like she's actually wearing like very, very fine clothing. And she has a sort of, um, anyone see like Lion in Winter with, um, uh, uh, Catherine Hepburn is Eleanor of Aquitaine, like that kind of, that kind of headdress where it's sort of like a flat top that kind of, yep. You know what I'm talking about with like drapes around and all that kind of stuff that kind of cuffs oh, the face. Yeah. Wimple or something like that. Yeah. Or? Almost like a, yeah. Like a, like a nun's wimple almost like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but more of like a, the noble aspect of that. Yep. Um, uh, but she also has an apron on as well, and there's a couple of stains on it, as, uh, uh, um, so over top of her dress. Uh, but they smile as you guys come in, and they say, "Ah, we're perfect." This is uh, uh, the the woman. It is so good to see you. Welcome to the Broken Head. Coming out of the city, I see. Um, John, is the finery that Estelle mm -hmm. is her name wearing uh, similar to the finery that the uh, fake arguing men were. <laughs> uh, no, so no, no, sorry, no, it is not actually. Okay. Um, it's different. Um, in fact, uh, Avaricios, uh, Varga and Avaricios, you would immediately pick up on the fact that Varga would pick up that it is not the same. Avaricios would pick up on the fact that it is definitely clerical in nature. In fact, what mm. you see draped around her neck, um, um, and proudly displayed over top the front of her atron apron is a holy symbol and that is a red coin a bright red coin that immediately marks her um as a priest um although the rest of you may not know this actually a priest of the god tycheus um one moment uh tycheus, tycheus. is the god Ty of luck fate and wealth and is known as the lady of thieves Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, I will. Uh, I will. Keeper. Sorry, Mike. If you so type that's in what you want to see. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Keeper, yeah. 
Yeah. I will uh, uh, wave to the innkeeper and his wife and hail and well met. We uh, come in need of a cup of wine, madam. You have come to the right place. Cronus is like, well, don't be talking to them like that. Still, let's get him a seat then. I'm Kronos. Welcome to the Broken Head. And he kind of comes out from behind the bar and he offers you guys a seat. Um, I am you know, Oswick, the optimistic. <laughs> checking his list. And, yes, I Oswick love the, the title. That's going to take you far, assuming that you're planning on going down to the caverns. Who knows? I'm optimistic. But first, <laughs> food and drink and rest for I and my companions. Excellent. Well, you've come yes, to the right could... place. Are you also looking for a bed for the night? Uh, quite quite so, yes. Uh, uh, please uh, uh, allow me uh, to introduce myself. My name is uh, Frater Avaricios de, of uh, Epirenus. It is, uh, I, I cannot tell you how, how glad I am to see that you're actually here. Epirenus? You're all the way down from the... Uh... From the uh, the uh, uh, Arcanate of Arturos, are you? Wine country. This is this is true. This is true. The uh, the uh, the the land of the uh, uh, the uh, the fluid of of our gods. Correct. And and Estelle is like, uh, are you a? You called yourself Frater Avaricius? Are you a, a man of the cloth? Uh, and he he would take out his little uh, holy symbol, showing the little uh, uh, flail. Uh, which is the uh, uh, holy symbol of uh, uh, shoot, how, uh, how do you pronounce it? Lys Lysios? Lysion? He would, Lysion, Lysion. Lysion. Well, we shall get along famously, I'm sure. But you, forgive me for saying so, but you look like you have a bit of a bruise on your head. Is, is that something I might be able to take care of? Or perhaps your god has already... Well, perhaps not, I'm afraid. I, of uh, course, would be willing to yes. provide the services of my god. Oh, well, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, who am I to say no? I mean, it is uh, uh, something that we can share. You know? Fantastic. Well, all, all we, I can, you have many journeys ahead of you. I'm sure there's much to discuss about the city and we wouldn't want you going down without full, full health. So it would only cost you 100 gold. Don't do oh. it. I can take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 can, I can heal you of one hit point. Today, Matt. I, I, I will I will keep this in mind. I uh, I'm uh, very grateful for your offer, and I will keep it in mind. But I'm sure this I'm sure that will buff out. Ah. This is but a scratch. In the meantime, of course, I'm sure your God would approve of perhaps the indulgence in a bit of a bit of the vintage that we may have here. In that case, it may uh, be more to your likely, more maybe perhaps more to your budgetary. Uh, Limitations, shall we say? At, at, at the moment, perhaps I think probably yes. Of course, soon and, to be. You know, you know, there's there's healing and then not caring that you're hurt. You know, one <laughs> is deeper than the other. One. The trick is not minding that it hurts. Right. You name the movie, anybody? No? That would be Lawrence of Arabia. Correct. Zing. Uh, so the uh, is that the match scene? Indeed. Yeah. Yes. One of the greatest cuts in movie history. Anyways, oh. the uh, uh, Chronos. Um, jumps in and he's like, well, nothing's free here at the Broken Head. We've got to make a living, but if we are here to provide service for those venturing into the caverns. So, if you'd like something to drink, let me look at my food costs here. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, you seem to be looking off in some direction over there. Is there something? <laughs> it changes day to day. Uh, so, I'll give you the rundown. I'll give you the rundown in my voice. So we don't have to keep this up. Um, so here's the here's okay. the rates. Uh, there is a up uh, upstairs. Basically, there is a large bunk room. Okay, that's where most people sleep. If the bunk room is full, then people sleep in the common room. It is not full, so you can sleep in the bunk room. Um, that is probably what you're going to be looking for. Just be aware that whenever you strike it rich down in the caverns of Arden Bull, um, you may be able to afford one of the private rooms. Right now, I can guarantee you cannot. Uh, the bunk room though costs uh, ten silver a day, which is a gold a day. Or three gold a week, so it's really a big deal for a uh, good deal for a week. Is worth three gold uh, per person. Uh, that's per correct. Week. Yeah, and a bed in the bunk room. Yeah, three gold per week. Um, food is additional. It is two silver for a simple meal or two GP for a rich meal. Um, 
these uh, prices when compared to like what you were getting in Gosterwick um, and other, the other places where you've traveled through are, um, are absolute like criminal, like criminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But got that, got that you can kind of see what kind of stake this guy has made here. Yeah, everything is imported. I get this is like real Yukon territory kind of pricing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got it. Um, well, uh, I have a few gold, and how we have some private yeah. rooms. But... Sorry. Yeah, how much are the private rooms? Uh, private rooms. You just want to know? Uh, sure. A private room is uh, three gold per day per person or 20 gold per week. 20, 20 versus three. Yeah. Oof. You save so one gold. You save one gold, yeah. <laughs> it's a deal. <laughs> yeah. Um, I say we just, we don't pay for the week. We don't know how long, we, you know. I'm probably not going to be alive for the week, quite honestly. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, like, Osric uh, Osir wouldn't think that. He's the optimist. I, I'm very optimistic today. <laughs> Tomorrow I may be omnicompetent again. Who knows? Well, even then, uh, you're, still, you're still golden. How much That's How much true. is an ale, Barkeep? Uh, an right. ale? We usually like to roll it into the meal price, but you look like you've had a rough day. So, an ale will cost you a silver. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna toss him four silver. Four ales for all of us. And I wanna watch what he does with the coins after if he takes it. <laughs> okay, yes, he he, he expertly uh, uh you know, without even thinking about it, like uh, makes yeah. him disappear into a into a pocket. Does he seem particularly dexterous? Yes. Yeah. For for a large man he does, yeah. Yes. Gotcha. So, so tell me what stories have you heard? I've got my men all a, all a flitter and all a titter about some some large noise coming from the south. What can you tell us of that? Ah, uh, well, information is money, my friend. You know how the business goes. <laughs> I like the cut of your jib. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I totally. I, I say, uh, does the bar tend to drink with the patron? And I raise my glass. Ah, uh, no, I've got a business to run. Mm -hmm. What's your name, though? I can I hear the I hear the sound of whiskinga on your voice. <clears throat> uh, yeah. I should hey guys, good. How how much? And I'm gonna say this away from, like toward the maybe day off. Like, how much do you think it would be worth to him to know about the um, arm elevator? This is precisely yeah. I'm not. I'm not giving this information to anyone unless I have. No, it. but I'm just saying that we were something, right? Uh, I, don't... I definitely think it's worth a lot. Um, I, I'm, I'm of the mind uh, that uh, more powerful organizations would pay better than the innkeep for that information, especially if it was exclusive yeah. to them. For yeah. Instance, and... For instance, the thieves guild in uh, Gosterwick, which is why I've been doing some forward research that doesn't mean we have to wait till then by the way i'm not i'm not trying to make the decision for us but uh i think it's a very good idea mike in general so i mean i think uh, keeping it secret to ourselves is a great way to escape if we need it and you know the yeah. hand is still in the right spot keep it secret <laughs> keep it safe so uh, you see I, that there's um uh one of the uh the three robed gentlemen um, is over yeah. during this conversation. He kind of breaks away from the other two, but he's he's like the other two sort of hover behind him a little bit from a from a distance. Um, and he says, "Yes," uh, and he's he has like a um, like a uh, black hair, like in a page boy haircut, sort of with like a, 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 a the cowl of his robe sort of like sitting around his neck. Um, and uh, he um, he is draped, by the way, with um, uh, with a band of like a necklace made of like gold circles, right? Like doof, 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 like a heavy, heavy chain, like around his neck. Um, you can see that this in, in his companions that he was arguing with also seem to have similar chains, but with different markings on them. Um, I would say that, I would say that probably only our Avaricios would know immediately um, that these would, that these are the markings of someone who is a member of one of the Arcantian factors. The factors are basically the names for the um, the major trading guilds 
of Arcantos. Oh. Um, anyways, he comes forward and he says, and he kind of has like these fingers, uh, you know, his fingers like steep, and he's like, ah, I indeed, I, I too came from the south up the, up the long stair. I didn't have anything untoward except for the arduous journey itself, but I do require to go back that way, as my final destination is Narcelian. If there's some danger to the south, I would dearly like to know. Right, we couldn't hear anything over the roar of the waterfall. Wow. Uh, we did get dragon. That we did yeah. see the something flying around. Yes. Yes. Was well, something, something disturbed across the Norinex? Uh It makes everything much more dangerous. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I forgot it's... to introduce myself. My name is Chrysarius, known as Three Legs. <laughs> Don't ask why. Oh, God. Now I don't want to. We're good. <laughs> uh, now we know what contented the simians. I am from um, the. Uh, I am from the. Um, uh, the prosperity factor, as you can see. Ah. Uh, uh, and do you find prosperity here within the city? Indeed, we. Oh, I should say I do. Uh, always looking for adventurers to plumb the depths and bring back what statuary they may be able to find. The more ancient, the more large, the more quantity, the more quality, the more we're willing to pay. And you know, Surely. guaranteed by the prosperity factor, we give you a line of, we give you a letter of credit. You can cash that in at any one of the major trading centers of the, of the empire, including Gosterwick. Hmm? If you came from the do south, you, do you sell any wares here, my friend? Do you have a station set up uh, in a back room, perhaps? Well, no, we pay here. We take the statuary, and then we're going to bring it back to either Newmarket or Narcelian, perhaps even as far as Arcturos. You bring us the statuary, we pay you. Simple as that. So it's and clear then, that they're not like, you can't like buy adventuring gear here. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, well, no, no, like, no uh, more than you voice that uh, question, um, that uh, the the Weasley <laughs> Hawkeye. Enough. Yeah, exactly. Um, it says, well, if you're looking for gear, I'm a trader and might have something in my cart out back in the stables in the morning, though, the, perhaps. Is this the shady looking guy when we first walked in that eyed us up and down? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, uh, good sir, you say that you pay for statuary. Uh, I presume there's a market for such things, but surely not only statues. Uh, uh, a city of such ancient and myriad warrens must be filled with many treasures. Uh, pottery, paintings, silks. So, there's a short, uh, kind of fat man, like completely bald right? Uh, like, uh, like a pink little ball, hey. right? Um, who okay. is also wearing the robes, and he kind of pops forward, and he goes, indeed, uh, you are uh, quite correct. There is uh, m many treasures uh, below, but uh, mm, we don't have the permission from our, from our lords to actually mm, accept such valuable items, but I'm sure you can probably find buyers within the halls themselves. Jam-packed! Jam-packed with all sorts of trade and merchants and what not. It appears empty. The ruined city appears empty, but let me tell you, below thriving well populated really well he's not, this is Kronos he's like uh, he's not lying it's a hub of activity down there surely there was a traffic back and forth were that the case Oh, I, if you want the traffic if, if you want to go to the center of trade and you don't want to take advantage of my traveling friend here and he kind of looks suspiciously at the hawk nose guys as well um he said uh he says that the forum of sets where you want to go the, the entrance is right down you you couldn't have missed it marble lined entrance on the western side of the falls there up the short stair still heavily trafficked we see all sorts of strange people coming in and out of there the forum of set you say aye the forum there was a uh... What was it you saw, Varger, there? Some sort of cat or or lion or dog of some kind there at the door? In, lying in wait? Do you recall? I do not recall. <laughs> I remember, when you, were you, uh, over you the crawled head. across and you saw a creature. Yeah. Come out and look around. I don't remember. You saw a creature there. Oh, 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 oh. I see. Wait. 
What? I, I'm sorry. Okay, you, when you, you climbed behind the head and you got to yes. the other shoulder, you looked down at the marble entrance on the wall. And That's you saw the entrance he's there. referring to. I am It is, yes. I see. And yes, upon that I saw How do people a, get in a, a feline creature. Yeah, let, let me follow up that, that statement and say, well, how does Great. one get to the, the marble entrance? Oh, you just uh, have to looked, cross it. It looked very dangerous. Yeah, you just have to approach from the western side, but the stair itself is perfectly navigable. Mm. It just only goes That's halfway it. up. But if you want to get into the caverns right quick, from the valley below, that's where you go. It just won't bring you up to the plateau. Uh, I thought I saw some uh, animal upon the entrance. Ah, quite possible. You never know. There's all like I said, there's all sorts of creatures coming back and forth from there. All right. Interesting. And uh, do you yourself venture in, good sir? Nah, no, of course not. I'm smart enough to know where my uh, bread is buttered. I let the other ones do the dirty work like you yourselves. But should you equip yourselves in the right manner, have a head about you, I'm sure you'll be perfectly safe and come back with all sorts of interesting tales to tell me. Sure. And and what so, of the north of the ruins? Well. What, what, Mike? What about the well that we came across over by the, um, by the pyramid? Have you seen that? It looks like one has did me all the way. I've heard tale of it. Where it's a, it seems to be a quite an odd little uh, place. I, mean, I haven't sent any of my men over there. But we did send some men close by to the Tower of Scrutiny, just uh, south in the Forum, south of the Pyramid. Sent them in there to investigate. No one's, a, no one's come back. Let's uh, tell you that's the last time that I'm going to be sending any of my men in there. Like I said, I'll let you folk do the dirty work. You've got the stomach for it. What's what's the general attack? I... Sorry, Mike, what was that? Mike, yeah, you want to type it in? Mike? What's, the legend? what's the legend around that tower? Ah, good question. Yeah, the, uh, well, it was called the Tower of Scrutiny. It was a place where the priesthood of Thoth actually would... Well, this is... Now, this is only what I'm hearing from other adventurers who know more than I do, and the sages that roll here, roll through here every once in a while. But story is, is that back in the height of the city, when it was going about, is this is where the priests would uh, hold court over the forum itself and be able to look out across their city and make proclamations. So uh, 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 a building of civic importance to the ancients. Indeed. Other than the pyramid no, no. itself, it was the main structure of the forum, according to these historical types that I've been talking to. All right. And you say you sent men there? What, do you, uh, you have a contract basis, or are they um, hourly waged for you? No, he kind of points out a couple of, like, relatively well-armed uh, men, like Thorkin men. He's like, I've got a couple here to keep the peace, and we just figured that, you know, it, the place was solid and... Uh, withstood the test of time that maybe there might be something interesting to poke about at. Well, it seems safe enough. Apparently not. They haven't returned. Well, I am curious. If, if, that is, if that is a place that has not been entered, but there, you are aware of that there's a, all this bustling activity, there must be like a, a common entrance, a safer entrance where people come and go all the time. Uh, where, where, where is this? Oh, that would be the pyramid itself. You just climb the steps up there to the statue of Thoth. Now, I can't require... There's all sorts of different tales about what you've got to do, but it's something about moving the arms of the statue is opening up an entranceway down, but that is the main entranceway. So people do this all the time, and that's more like safety. That's like the safe way to go. Not, I wouldn't say all the time, but when we do get adventurers, that's what we've heard. That's where a lot of them go in, come back out again. That, and of course, the entrance on the side of the uh, of the of the of the cliff itself. The, the, the one that goes over to into the place of set. Right? Correct. Yeah, the former set. That's the place. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Don't like Very to say the name aloud. You know that religion's proscribed. Not allowed to worship the snake god anymore. I was going oh. to ask about that. It is a little bit frowned upon in a city dedicated to Thoth. Well, what goes on underneath Ardenvaux stays in Ardenvaux, if you know what I mean. 
the great I literally uh, do not oh, know yeah. what you mean the the basilius back in arcantos uh he doesn't know what's going on this is the yeah. perfect place for secret worships and cults and all sorts all manners of proscribed and perverted activities going on so if any place was going to give rise to mm. a burgeoning cult of set this would be the place uh -oh. <laughs> you, you heard a lot of legends you, you must have heard a lot of legends about um Arden Vool. Um does the name Nymeria was that her name? Close enough. <laughs> no, I can't say I've heard that name. Sounds Arcantian though. Uh do you know who uh oh what was his name? Wizard Khan? No, no. Uh, uh, Yurtle. Do you know the name Yurtle? Yurtle. No, I can't say I've heard of that either. Okay. Well, where'd you hear the name? I'd love to know. I'll pass it all on to other people along the way. <laughs> well, as a seeker of knowledge and a student of the ancient wisdom path, one comes across many names throughout the research as one prepares for an adventure <laughs> and... Uh, such as this, uh, Urtol, Urtol, where did I come across that name? Oh, it, uh, I'm afraid it escapes me now, but it was important. I made a note of it here somewhere. <laughs> Are a lot of members. He was a very, very hungry fellow, kind of grumpy. <laughs> Are, uh, Osric, are you perhaps a member of the Collegia? You have that air about you of one of the learned. Ah, uh, learned I am, but a wizard I am not. Truly, the staff and the beard and... No? Yeah, it's fetching, isn't it? It suits me, I feel. But merely an affectation, I see. I am a teller of tales, a wanderer <laughs> of paths, a man of the earth and the sky and the world. But no, not a practitioner. Huh? Merely learned. Well, that surprises me. I could have sworn that uh, perhaps, but, but, but what, whatever the case may be. A free spirit, perhaps. A free spirit... <laughs> Uh, a seeker of truth, a weaver of words. Well, the night is getting on, gentlemen, so you'll bunk away. Uh, well, uh, have you paid? What, what are you paying? I will pay for a bunk and a meal. Okay, so uh, if, if you're all doing what Osric is doing, that's going to cost you 10 SP plus 2 SP, so it's going to cost you 12 SP for the night. Total or each? Each. Each. So 1.2 gold, yes? 1.2 gold, correct. Okay. Uh, Does everyone have that? The, the uh, good news is that now the my number of coins has increased, even though the value of those coins has decreased. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I now I now have eight silver coins, and I'm very proud of them. Does, uh, tell me if any of you cannot afford that, or, or is not going to pay that. Uh, I'd like to uh, try to barter with the guy if I can. Uh huh. We have some Sturge eggs. You got Sturge eggs. Oh, yeah. Uh, about about the bunk. Uh, you seem like a purveyor of fine things. Rare things. Uh, I say that uh, in earshot also of the Arcantian factors. Mm. Uh, what of uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, rare pin of a Sturge? I'll pull an egg out. The, the, so do one of these. the eyes widen you know what i mean i did um, pull one out i don't i don't tell them i have several more <laughs> so a couple of like the the thorkin um groomsmen and guardsmen actually like they actually kind of like oh, whoa they, they, they look at it and their eyes like widen you actually see a couple of them actually um lick their lips a little bit um uh, and they they dart their eyes from the eggs over to chronos to you varger then back to the eggs and you know back and forth like that you know um Cronus is like ah a rarity and quite delicious, fried up in the morning. Uh, what do you What do you want for them? What say uh, my friends and I have a night's rest, and we can sup upon these eggs in the morning? The lot of us. How many do you second, have? I pull a second egg out, <laughs> and I don't pull any more than the two. But I want to see what he says after the second egg. <laughs> Three eggs. I'll give you uh, each a bunk. A meal for the night, and I'll, I'll treat you to some breakfast of some of this. Is it was well in the morning. Three eggs. 
I'm going to look at my party mates. Would you rather the gold or the eggs? I say do it. All right. Let's go. Yeah, they're going to hatch eventually anyway, and then they're gross. <laughs> <Let's just> go <laughs> <to it. laughs> I was like, I don't want this hatching when we're in the dungeon and like uh -oh. <laughs> getting this in the night. So in my unless, mind, I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> so unless we could train them. Oh God! R ride them like a mount. Train Sturges. <laughs> um, okay, here's what I'll say. Three. Don't we have three, four? four? We do. Here's here's what I'm, I'm trying to haggle here. Uh, in fact, we can. I can kind of lean into you guys. Three for three for the room. What can we get for four? You think? You think another hundred feet of rope, probably. A, a ten foot pole, ten feet of rope, a couple things of oil. You're dealing with you're dealing with Chronos, <laughs> oh. who doesn't sell that stuff. The the no, I know. The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chronos, Chronos doesn't sell the stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Here's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna say, I could do three. Yes. I have a fourth, but I also need some adventuring gear. I'm going to look at Kronos, and then I'm going to look at the shady guy, and I'm going to look at Kronos again, and I say, I don't know which one of you wants the fourth more, or to whom it's more valuable. The guy with the, with the note, like the traitor, um, yeah. he just, he like waves you away. Disgusting things. Typical Thorkins. Weird tastes they have. <laughs> Uh, how about this? I, I look at him. Does he have a bed for the night? Of course I have a bed for the night. I've got one of the private rooms. I'm a wealthy man, don't you know? <laughs> you could talk to me directly, you know. Uh, I... I... I it, <laughs> <laughs> um... Th this is why... They introduced dice rolls into 5e because yes. stumbling <laughs> over trying to be a suave thief because, you know. Well, once again, like, David, you don't have to, you don't actually have to say it, like, in voice. Like, if there's a goal you have in no, mind, no, just no, let me course. know and we can do it. It's it's mostly that I have a, a cough, so I'm trying to, like, swallow a cough every time I talk. But, yeah. Um, all right. I think, I uh, I think three, is, three is a great deal. Uh, yes. Uh, and we'll keep the fourth for ourselves. Well, okay. Why don't we just negotiate for like two yeah, nights at the end, right? Maybe, two yeah, nights, extra, end, extra right? night. But yeah, okay. Can... Let's. I'll counter offer. Right. That's a great idea. I'll say yeah. three. Three is pretty steep. If I give you four, can we have two nights? Two nights, one meal. Done. Done. Go. That's uh, for the four of us. And they, uh, like they. They like grab the eggs from you. Like they're so super psyched to get those eggs, <laughs> which 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 are eating each in the cupboard slot, right? So that actually lightens your load a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was that was my uh, my thought too. Okay, so you have uh, you have two uh, two nights, and you get the meal for tonight. Um, and tomorrow morning they'll they'll mix you up some um, sturge omelets, which is going to be delicious. Um, and that's for the four of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. Uh, we we have to end the session right now, uh, but uh, just so. Uh, we can, I can anticipate what's next. Are you, um, he can tell you like all sorts of different stuff. Like he can feed you things. Now you can ask him specific uh, questions about certain things that you may have heard, um, um, or you can just he can just kind of volunteer some information that he may he may know, um, which he can feed you. Would you um, assuming you want to hear what he knows? Do you want to hear it before you go to bed for the night, or would you rather do it in the morning? Well, I I am curious. Uh... Because I heard about a precinct of the Ibis God, which we assume is Thoth. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard of such a place down below? Is it, you know, underneath the pyramid or is it near some other place down there? Yeah, so th that is definitely a thing. But I'm just saying is like that that's a specific question and like that could be rolled into like we I should, would, we should I do would that stuff next session because it's, it's past, you know. It's yeah, fine. Yeah, Var Vargar would prefer us. It still be night when we start next session. Mm. Okay, <laughs> I wonder why, you thief. <laughs> you're gonna do something nefarious, aren't you? I just realized too that this entire time of the past three sessions that I've mislabeled you as Thorkin, and you are full on Whiskinga, and that is awful. Uh, Me? Yeah. 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 You're Whiskinga. I'm, All right. I'm will, from the north. Yes. I will change it yeah. next time. I apologize. All right, cool. All right. So rumors uh, will abound at the Broken Head next time, um, and okay. there'll be lots of juicy details upon which they can uh, uh, 
they can decide what they would like to do with that. Um, all right. So we'll see how they wheel and deal next time. So thanks everybody for watching once again. Uh, it's three days, six down the line. We just finished episode three of Harls of Arden Vool. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Pass along the word to all your friends and family. Uh, get more eyes on this. So uh, we will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.